Today's college football game on ESPNU is presented in high definition. Welcome to homecoming at Duke University. This gorgeous campus is bustling with activity, and today the alums hope Duke can hand Miami their seventh consecutive ACC loss. It's the new look ACC. Duke, Miami, presented by Allstate. Any way you can send this thing into overtime? Yeah. No problem. I don't know what he was looking at, but we're going into overtime. Buffalo Wild Wings, you have to be here. This could finally end it. Oh my! Uh, ground control. We have a problem. Switching to lithium power. I feel better already. Extreme power for all of your high-tech devices. Energizer, ultimate lithium, and advanced lithium. Energizer, keep going. Prepare to defeat dry skin with new Gillette Dry Skin Hydrator and Body Wash. A deep cleanser with three times the hydrators. You'll step out of the shower feeling like you could take on the world. New Gillette Body Wash. Unleash the power of your shower. Looking live inside historic Wallace Wade Stadium on the campus of Duke University. And today the Blue Devils under new head coach David Cutcliffe looking for a bounce back. They were shut out two weeks ago at Georgia Tech as they take on the Miami Hurricanes. Here's what's on tap. We'll introduce you to our campus connection reporter. She can talk a good game and also play a good game on the hardwood. We'll go inside Coach Cutcliffe's office, our coach's crib segment. Duke and the Rose Bowl, what a history they've had. In fact, the Rose Bowl was played here, and the buck stops in Durham, North Carolina. Overcast skies as you look at Randy Shannon. Last two times he's played Duke, very close contest. Trying to break a streak, trying to get back in the win column in the ACC. David Cutcliffe has brought back an excitement to campus involving football. The students are getting pumped up again. They really are, Doug, and we in our open, you can see the excitement over at the basketball arena. I think it's trickling out now. You're starting to see it in football as well. Miami won the toss and deferred. Duke will receive the seventh straight game. Duke has lost the opening toss. That's just, that's bad luck. Matt Bosher boots it away for the Hurricanes. Deep kick with the wind at his back. Jabari Marshall let that bound through the end zone, and the Blue Devils will start first and 10 from the 20 yard line. Thaddeus Lewis from Opelika, Florida, that's down near Dade County, 
He's a Miami kid, and he's excited about playing against this Miami team. He knows most of the players. Well, there's 14 Floridians at Duke, so not only is that excited, there's a lot of guys on this crew, on this team that's exci are excited as well. And that eye formation with Tyler Robinson, the fullback, Clifford Harris, the tailback. To the ground it goes over the right side. Sean Spence, the outstanding linebacker for Miami, comes up with the tackle after a gain of three. Here's the Blue Devils up front. Cameron Goldberg is the best at left tackle. He will not come out of the game. He is the force, and David Cutcliffe hopes to have more like him in years to come. Euron Riley is the go-to guy at wide receiver. He and Thad are a great combination quarterback-receiver combo. Climbing up the charts for the records as well. Taking his time, getting that signal from the sidelines, and Coach Cut. Back to the ground it goes, Clifford Harris. Another short game, will bring up third down and five. Anthony Reddick came up to make the stop for Miami up front. Bailey Dixon, Hendricks, and Wesley. Saw these guys last week, and linebacker Sean Spence, a true freshman, it could be one of the best to ever suit up in Miami, and that is saying something. Harris, Reddick, Nicholas, and Johnson in the secondary. Only three interceptions all season. Free Flag play, down on the play, yep. In and out of the hands of Iran Riley. So it looks like it'll be a free opportunity. Maybe a first down if it goes against Miami. Good job by Thaddeus Lewis of getting them off sides at hard count. Most quarterbacks know Miami's going to come off the ball quick. Hut, hut, hut. Get them off balance. Brad Allen, our referee. Defense number 99. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. You can see right there. Defensive tackle jumping offside. Duke looks to the sidelines now, gets the signal. The no huddle look at so many teams. The majority of college football teams have gone to that. The no huddle. Back to the ground this time. First time on the left side as Harris, the senior, goes for six yards and against Sean Spence on the stop for the Hurricanes. Doug, this is a big key for Duke. They really wanted to come off the ball. You can see inside that blocking right there by the B-back Tyler Robinson in the offensive line. They spent a lot of time in the inside run drill during the bye week to establish a running game. They're only averaging 3.2 yards per carry right there, six yards on first down. Second in the ACC, less than 100 rushing yards per contest. A week ago against Central Florida, the defense was just flat out stout. The Knights uh, just couldn't move the ball. They were frustrated all afternoon, and I'm mean, hoping for more of the same. Same play over the left side again, Clifford Harris. And Duke getting a good push. And they're getting it on. You see where they're going? To their left side behind Cameron Goldberg, Kyle Hill, and Brian Morgan. Also, Tyler Robinson, who's back for a sixth year, B-back, H-back, whatever you want to call him, is the key guy in that. If you can keep it in third and short against Miami, you have a chance. You saw Harris lined up in that tailback slot, and he'll carry it again right up the gut, and he gets another first down. Darrell Sharpton on the stop for the U. There's some Duke fans uh, excited that positive things are happening for this football program. This is what you have to have, Doug. You see movement right there by Kyle Hill coming around. He's a young freshman, but he shows good foot footwork and getting in there and giving Clifford Harris a chance behind him. First and ten, and again, they get in their stance, look to the sidelines. Somewhat disconcerting if you're on the defensive side. You haven't seen that. You're ready to go, and then you have to pull back. <laughs> Two step drop. Nice strike to Riley on the outside. Brandon Harris on the stop. A pickup of nine, and Duke looks sharp. They really do, and that's the, the work that you see. And when you watch them practice, Doug, they are very intense in practice. See, he gets to that fifth step, gets that ball out on that quick slant. Eron Riley there, one of the better throws to make in front of Brandon Harris. That is Lewis is much better this year at doing that. Second down. Running right into the teeth of that Miami defense. And Cliff Harris goes nowhere. In fact, no gain as he's thrown backwards. You know, Colt Roper talked about it. We've got to be stout inside. Joe Joseph for Miami at left right tackle. Dwayne Hendricks left tackle. Those interior tackles are so big. 
And if we don't attack him early, Kurt Ward can say we're going to struggle. Quickly to line of scrimmage. You think it's going to be a quick snap, but again, they back off. Maybe drawing off sides. Two tight ends. Harris, the lone running back, takes the handoff, goes right up the middle, and I don't think he got it. He'll come up short again. Daryl Sharpton. Doug, they were running so well with two backs, and then that time they come with a single back setup. And Miami did a very good job. Daryl Sharpton was one of the linebackers that was in there to make the play. It's fourth and short. Looks like Duke may be going for it. That is a full yard. That's yeah. a long <laughs> yard as you look at David Cutcliffe. Now they're going back to two backs. What was effective for him early in this drive. Crowd trying to get involved. They're going to go for it. Fourth down. They get it. That's beautiful push. Great blocking on the left side. Clifford Harris on the carry. Anthony Reddick on the stop, but not before a four-yard gain and the third consecutive first down for the Blue Devils. Doug, we talked about it. Hold it right there. You're going to see Nick Robinson come here and make a good block. And then all you have to do is just get inside, and everybody's on the line of scrimmage. So watch how they come off. You see those blue jerseys? Boom. Good block outside. You're going to pick up three or four yards every time. Nothing fancy from this Duke offense. Too tight. You got a full back. Uh, they're just going right at him. But setting up for later in the game because they got Miami creeping up now. Those linebackers and safeties and corners are worried about the run game. First time from the gun. Lewis setting up that screen. Has Tony Jackson on the outside. Close to another first down. Glenn Cook tripped him up. He's very close to a fourth straight first down. Yeah, one block away from getting further along. What you want to do now, you've run inside. Now you want to get the screen game outside. You can see right there the missed block. Good tackle by Glenn Cook. You can see right there, you get everybody inside, and your offensive lineman going to go outside, but Glenn Cook makes a great individual tackle. Second down and three. He slid out of bounds after a gain of seven. Again, they're looking to the sidelines. See a speed team, Doug, you attack them early. Work on their middle, and then you start getting to the edge, and if you do. Two signal callers. One is a phantom signal caller, and one is sitting in the real signals, like having two third base coaches. Lewis to Riley. Check that. That's Rafael Chestnut. Went up short some good hands. Chavez Grant pushed him out of bounds, and he was out of bounds. Well, good play. Lewis wanted him to go quicker. Watch, Lewis is directing him get back get back and as soon as he does he throws him the football a little bit too far outside play good play by chestnut Ooh. Ooh, that's close yeah i don't know i thought he had one foot in play number 12 now this opening drive for duke three hey, victories in the season buck that matches their win total for the last three years combined them stopping the play gives the replay booth a chance to look at it they may look at it or they may not they may let the play go They're going to play on. Now. And now they get the call from upstairs. Every replay you see is what our folks upstairs see. Duke calls timeout. The play clock was winding down, so Coach Cut will huddle up everybody and talk it over. The entire offense comes over to the side. Boy, the entire attitude, Buck, you were here for practice on Thursday. And the entire attitude has just changed dramatically here at Duke. We want to introduce you to our campus connection reporter. We told you she could talk a good game. And look at that stroke from the corner. Abby Wainer, senior guard for the Duke Blue Devils. And look at the drive. Flash and dash. Oh, she's got a lot of game. And you know what? Look at this defensive effort. I love that. Abby Wainer showing some defense. That might not be her strength, but that was a pretty good highlight we pulled. Abby Wiener, welcome to our team on ESPNU. How are you? I I'm great. How are you guys doing? Hey, you can play D. Don't let anybody say you can't. That was good stuff it's, there. It's well, all I was going to ask you guys, if you could uh, go ahead and relay that message on onto my coach, uh, I would really <laughs> greatly appreciate it. <laughs> hey, Abby, tell us, uh, you're a student here, and obviously this football team has grabbed the attention of the student body, haven't they? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, the difference from last year to this year is like a completely new school, and it's definitely something that we're working on, and it's really easy to support a football team who's playing so well and really enjoying it. Yeah, they're getting off to a good start today against Miami, although Lewis gets thrown for a loss, and that'll bring up 
a fourth down situation. You know, Abby, when you look at this Durham City and, and how they have been around the basketball, how are they changing for football now? Well, there's a definite, definite correlation between the fan base here, and that's something that I think Coach Cutcliffe has really tried to work on, is drawing from the success and the fans that the basketball team gets. And, you know, there's, we're really filling the stadium now and not quite where we need to be, but there's been so many events and uh, different things that Coach has done around the, um, around the community as well as around the campus. Well, there's Coach Cut on the sidelines. Big Ron Middleton, the big man next to him with a headset. One of seven coaches that Coach Cut brought back from his Ole Miss staff. Here's the punt away by Kevin Jones that almost bounded to the left, a 38-yard punt that goes into the end zone. And Miami will start from the 20-yard line. When we come back, more from Abby Wainer and more from Durham, North Carolina. I love steak, man. Enjoy your steaks, gentlemen. Is this it? You in order? No, oh, valet's getting mine. How about a steak guy anymore, you know? <laughs> There it is. Triple steak burrito. See, I'm more of a triple steak kind of guy. Oh. I have my own. Taco Bell's new triple steak burrito. Steak, steak, and more grilled marinated steak. There's steak night, then there's triple steak night. Triple steak guys, that's what we are. In here. I can make you stronger. I can make you fit. I can make you ripped, powerful, shredded. Are you ready? You better be. Brian Stan, world champion mixed martial artist. Before he fought in a cage, he did two tours in Iraq with the U.S. Marine Corps and played football for Navy. Fitness has been my life. When I go into that cage, fitness is my only weapon. I've taken everything I've learned. The strength and speed of football, the discipline and commitment of the military, the controlled power of mixed martial arts, and distilled it all into one perfect fitness routine. And now he's making his personal workout system available to you for the first time. My techniques, my secrets. I will show you the perfect exercises for each muscle group and lay out the perfect workout schedule for the results you want. Together, we can unlock your body's potential. We can do this. Let's go. Call now to get Brian's All-American Body Shredding Interactive DVD. As a bonus, his personal workout regimen comes complete with the exclusive Pro Shredder. The Pro Shredder helps me power up my body with these super shredding exercises. Like this Russian twist that absolutely fires my obliques. Better yet, he will send you not one, but two Pro Shredders. With two Pro Shredders, I can turn a simple push-up into a super shredding push-up. And check out these chest flies. You get all this, the All-American Body Shredding Program, plus two Pro Shredders for just $29.95. Hey, I know times are tough, so I'm making sure you don't have to get ripped off to get ripped. And that's not all. Call now and Brian will also include his personal nutrition plan. My Max Muscle Nutritional Plan helps me cut weight when I need to without losing power. If after just one workout, if you don't agree that this is the ultimate body training system, send it back, no questions asked. Simple, affordable, guaranteed effective or your money back. This is your moment. Pick up that phone, make that call, stop getting ripped off and start getting ripped. Welcome back to ESPNU College Football, presented by Allstate. Duke ate up a lot of time in that opening drive, but came away with no points. Vincent Ray, their outstanding linebacker, went down, covering that last kick, but he appears to be okay. He has to sit out of play before he returns to action. And now Robert Marv tries to wake up. This Miami offense ranked 110th in the country. Completes the first pass, a big gainer to the outside to Aldarius Johnson. That goes for 21 yards. Katron Ganey on the stop. Well, that's a big play for Miami. It was, and very good movement by Marv. Good one hand right there, Doug, but also watch the slide and then redirect and get back in there and throw the football. A young freshman quarterback, retro freshman to a freshman, true freshman, Aldarius Johnson. Look at Robert Marv's numbers. Young man from Tampa. Nothing to write home about as he continues to learn how to read these defenses. Greg Cooper wiggles his way out of the first tackle and then gets collared. Matt Daniels on the stop for Duke. Up front, the offensive line is healthy. In fact, uh, Reggie Youngblood will play a lot today, and that's good news. Xavier Shannon is the coach's son, having a marvelous season. Cooper will carry the ball most of the time today, but... Javaris James is back and feeling better and will play today. Travis Benjamin is the speedster. The blur 
from Belle Glade. Edwin Pope named him that in the Miami Herald a few weeks back, and the penalty will go against Miami. Prior to the snap, there was a snap infraction. Number 55, offense. Five yards, remain second down. Just when you brag about Xavier Shannon, <laughs> he has a little hiccup there. And up front for Duke, Akpaka Warwick, Ogabasi, Rest Press, Akinbae, all very good. Tao Ely Ely, Michael is super strong in the middle, and Vincent Ray, a couple of Tasmanian devils there yeah, at the linebackers. Let them make a lot of tackles. They play all, they're all over the field, though, sideline to sideline. Not a bad secondary for Duke. Defense has definitely improved this season. Cooper. Looking for some on the outside, and that's that secondary. Patron Ganey coming up, playing tough. Didn't see that a lot last year. Here's Tao Ely Ely and Vincent Ray. Everybody talks about Tao Ely Ely, but Vincent Ray in his own right makes plays, and both of them are very veteran guys, love to play football all over the poor field, and play with a lot of effort, though. They are also two of the guys, Ty Ely, Ely lost 20 pounds from last year. So he's even more effective and can play all game long. Conditioning, major emphasis for David Cutcliffe and his staff. Third down and 10. Robert Marr. Over in the middle to Greg Cooper will come up short. A punting situation for the Hurricanes. Glenn Williams on the stop for Duke after a pickup of eight. Well, Miami had done so well of driving the football on that, on that drive, and then the false start by Xavier Shannon. So then what you do, you try to get the ball to Craig Cooper and make a few people miss, but Duke is flying to the football, much better at tackling as a group. Randy Shannon saw his team go two of 17 on third down conversions a week ago, and now Ofer on their first try today. And Matt Bosher was very busy last week against Central Florida. His kick takes a Miami bounce down at the four-yard line. Ryan Hill got down there. A 47-yard punt for Bosher. Zero on the return. Oh, game day. Yeah, uh -huh. like your breakfast. <laughs> Bergwood, your new car is rolling. It's not stolen. I just bought it. It's going to hit that truck. Please don't be too swear. Hot car, huh? It's on fire. Do you have new car replacement? Hmm? Call Allstate to sign up today. Are you in good hands? It's time someone gave homeowners the tools to do more with less. It's time guaranteed low prices got even lower. At the Home Depot, we've lowered prices on over a thousand items throughout the store. From tools to ceiling fans, light bulbs to bare and glidden paint, everyday items to special projects and more. Some of our biggest reductions ever to help protect your biggest investment. At the Home Depot, you can do it, we can help. This is one I want. Cars.com had me prepared before I came in. Smart. Yeah, otherwise I was going to have to go with Plan B. What's Plan B? Oh, I was going to have you fight Glondor in a stone circle death match. You should definitely step outside the circle to avoid any confusion. ESPN360.com, your online home for live college football. Catch out of market and exclusive matchups wherever you are. Watch more than 300 games live or replay any great moments you've missed. Log on to ESPN360.com. ESPNU College Football is presented by Allstate, proud sponsor of college football and the 75th Allstate Sugar Bowl. Are you in good hands? The Blue Devils played in a Sugar Bowl many years ago. We'll talk about that. No score so far. Duke deep in their own territory. Thad Lewis, young man from Opelika, Florida. That's down near Miami. In fact, Bill O'Reilly 
is a teacher and an Opalaka way back then. The conservative talk show host. That pass goes out of bounds, brings up second down. Our campus connection reporter is Abby Wayner, a senior here at Duke, an outstanding basketball player. Abby, we're going to roll some video of this morning as you got up bright and early, went out for the first practice. Hey, how you doing? Boy, a smile on your face. And then a four-hour practice session. Al Brown is the assistant coach. Here's the Al. He never smiles. He's serious. Joanne P. McCauley is the outstanding head coach at Duke. And we're going to talk to Abby about that as they go back to the ground. Right up the middle, nothing fancy for Duke right now. Abby, uh, four hours, that, that's grueling, but you're still smiling. Must not have been that bad, huh? Yeah, it really wasn't that bad until I think our team missed oh, just about every single free throw at the end of practice, and she was not light on the running. But, you know, it's the beginning of the year. It's our second practice, uh, the second practice in about a 12-hour span. But, you know, we're just really glad to be on the floor and to finally just stop talking about the season and start practicing. <laughs> we'll talk more about that in a minute because uh, the men had their blue-white scrimmage, and it was so exciting to be there today. I'm a big Hoops fan, you know, but yeah, that was ACC. Yeah, that was good stuff. Here's now from the ground in zone, in zone, dangerous territory. Looking deep. Overshoots his receiver on the outside. Let's go back down to Abby. How, how are the prospects for the basketball team this season? Abby, pretty good as always, I guess. Yeah, I mean, they're looking good so far. I mean, right now, it's just a ranking and a number is merely a number right now. But being inside for the men's blue-white scrimmage was just an incredibly cool atmosphere, considering that the season has just begun. And there was already the camera crazies in full force. And uh, the best part of it was when they stopped play for about, I don't know, about five minutes when the football team walked through Cameron. And they stopped action, and every single basketball player shook hands and gave high fives and cheered on the football team as they walked through Cameron onto their way to the game. Well, you're right about that. There was a synergy there that was Really neat to be Thanks. there. Kevin Jones on the punt, the fair catch. Let's join Lowell Galindo in the studio for a Sports Center U in game update. Guys, jumping out early, Lol. Thank you. We'll keep you posted on all the games going on this afternoon. Some big ones during this time slot. Buckeyes won 11 straight Big Ten road games. Miami with excellent field position, and now a flag down. Leron Bird took off when they were going into a shift mode. Diedrich Epps steps off the line. He takes off. Prior to the snap, full start. Offense number 47. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Oh, your water, young man. Those are the mistakes that Randy <laughs> Shannon's team, they're making. I mean, and there's nothing you can do to accelerate this growth. And talking to Patrick Nix, he said it's just going to take time. But we don't have time. We're in the middle of our ACC schedule. We're down 0-2 in the conference. We've got to find ways to correct the mistakes and keep moving forward. We see three penalties on the Hurricanes so far. Say an undisciplined bunch. Mar rolls to his left as a wide open receiver for a first down. And you can't get any more wide open than Leron Burr was. That goes for 18 yards. And we've seen two big pass plays, one of 21, and that one of 18. Well, I think the last play was going to Leron Burr, and he was fortunate to get another chance. Good blocking up front. Look at the protection. Roll Marv out to the left and just find his receiver. Sitting down, waiting on him. Leron Burr, the freshman, 6'4, 210, out of Boutte, Louisiana. Good young player. They got a lot of those, Doug, and I think that's where the undisciplined part comes in. They play so well one week or one play, and then the next you don't know what you're going to get. First and 10, Robert Marr straight back. Lots of time over the middle, just too hard. Looking for his tight end, Chris Zellner. More college football action comes your way tonight on the U. Little SEC action. Arkansas, fresh off that upset win at Auburn, goes to Lexington to take on Kentucky. Then at 10 o'clock, it's Florida A&M. FAMU taking on Southern. College football primetime presented by City on ESPNU. Also available ESPNU HD. Crystal clear high depth. Second and 10 now. The Hurricanes last in the ACC, averaging 5.3 yards per pass attempt. 
And he just threw it behind Travis Benjamin. Not a good pass by Robert Marr. But in all fairness, as we've watched a lot of tape, his receivers haven't helped him much this season. Sometimes they're out of position, not quite in the area that they need to be on certain routes. But other things, too, Robert Marr, he doesn't always know how to calibrate his arm. He's got a rifle, and sometimes instead of putting it in, that play before to Chris Zellner, give him something he can work with right there. He's only six yards away from him. We're live from Wallace Wade Stadium, Durham, North Carolina, campus of Duke University. Doug Bell, Charles Arbuckle, our campus connection reporter, Abby Wayner, Miami. 52 total yards, Duke 38. Most of that for the Blue Devils on the ground. Marv keeps it on the ground, gets a first down. Lee Butler on the stop, a 13-yard pickup for the freshman from Tampa. You know, and the biggest thing you have with Marv is his ability to run and do very well here. You're going to see how this opens up. It's almost a, it's a design quarterback draw. And once Vincent Ray misses him on the outside, he has all that room inside. Nobody to account for the quarterback. Marv is a young man from Tampa who originally committed to the University of Alabama when Mike Shula was the head coach. When Shula was let go, Marv changed his mind and went to the University of Miami. And Greg McElroy, a young man from San Antonio who committed to Miami, then changed his mind and went to Alabama. There's Benjamin on the reverse. They want to get that kid more touches. The young man from Belgrade, Vincent Ray, ran him out of bounds. Doug, how many times did we see Wake Forest run that with Kenneth Moore? A lot of these teams now are running that. Look how fast. <laughs> he is off, awesome. I mean, you know, this is slow motion, folks. And mm, it looks like he's moving at regular speed, and everybody else is a little bit slower. <laughs> We saw Edwin Pope, the legendary sports writer from the Miami Herald in the press box last week at Dolphin Stadium, still writing after all these years, and he is the one who named Benjamin the blur from Belgrade. And it really fits. Because when he gets in the open field, it's goodbye. Marr looking. Has his man. And it's a touchdown. 17-yard strike. And Miami is on the board. That goes to Devon Johnson, freshman from Booker T. Washington High School in Miami. His first touchdown. Welcome to the end zone, young man. Works on one hash, comes back to the other. And Devon Johnson just stays with it, Doug. Good catch by him and getting away. Watch how he works there. Marv does a good job of looking back to the left, and then that opens up. No one outside. Stay with your route. Make sure you look for the catch in for six. Bosher, who does all the kicking duties, very rare. He kicks, punts, field goals, extra points, makes it 7-0. That'll make Robert Marr feel so much better. Marv showed a lot of patience. Seventh touchdown of the season on target. 76 has student filmmakers to give their spin on what makes our gasoline so great. Here's one of the outstanding commercials. Does your vehicle keep bogging down? Maybe it's time to get on the ball with 76 gasoline. It's specially formulated to clean your engine, improve acceleration, help maximize mileage, and above all, reduce emissions, making 76 one of the cleanest fuels available now and for generations to come. 76, get the spirit. Here we are, bottom of the night, two outs. Coach Adams is making a call to the bullpen. Hey, guys, who do you want me to bring in? Man, is anyone ready to go yet? No. Send in Mahoney. You got it. Wait a second. He's bringing in Mahoney. This could be a long night. Here comes the pitch. And it's all tied up. Looks like we may be heading into extra innings. Buffalo Wild Wings, you have to be here. Bottom of the 15th. Popped up. This game won't end. David. For great college football from across the country, you need ESPN Game Plan from DirecTV. With key matchups and rivalries from major conferences, ESPN Game Plan has up to 12 games every Saturday from outside your local area. Order now and you'll be all set for a full season of college football with ESPN Game Plan from DirecTV. Only two payments of $64.50 each. To order, call 1-800-GET-SPORTS or go to directtv.com slash game plan. Technology gives you power. The power to motivate. The power to unite. The power
power that you control. Now, the power is in your hands with the most interactive pay-per-view event ever. WWE Cyber Sunday. You choose. You vote. You decide. WWE Cyber Sunday. Live Sunday, October 26th on the Right TV pay-per-view. Miami Hurricanes trying to stop a six-game ACC losing streak have jumped on top of Duke 7-0. Remember, Sunday, 5 Eastern on the U. It's the New England battle on the ice. College hockey, number five, Boston University against number six, New Hampshire. College hockey on the U, Sunday at 5 Eastern. Matt Bosher again will kick off. Nice crowd on hand. Legendary Wallace Wade Stadium. Bosher. Showing the leg, that's twice now. He's booted it through the end zone. And let's check in now once again with our Campus Connection reporter. Each and every week on the U, we introduce you to a new Campus Connection reporter. Ours just happens to be the smiling Abby Wainer. Hey, Wainer, the coaches get involved with the students here, don't they? Yeah, you know, it's been a season of new traditions, and one being have a cope with Coach Cut, where Coach Cut meets with, with the students and sometimes goes over film and answers questions. Well, this week in honor of homecoming, they changed it up, and they had Coach K on stage with Coach Cut as well. Uh, Coach Cut called Coach K a role model for what all coaches should be. Coach K returned the love, saying that he had adamant support for Coach Cut during the interview process. They also more or less commiserated with each other about the loss of their last names as they accepted head coaching jobs at Duke. <laughs> K losing more letters than cut. So it was a great experience, and they really uh, just reaffirmed the bonding mantra that the Duke athletics program has taken on. That was a five-yard pickup, and you're right. It is. There is a bond. I, I truly believe uh, basketball wants football to be good and vice versa. At all these big schools. Coach K is an icon, according to Coach Cut, a famous figure in sports. He had a lot to do with me coming to Duke. And as Abby mentioned earlier this week, they sat on a stage together. And Coach Cut said after it was all over, they just sat around and talked to each other one-on-one. -on -one. And when you can bend the ear and listen to an icon like Coach K, that is truly something more of the running game. Jay Hollingsworth, freshman from Sanford, North Carolina, as we check in with Lowell Galindo for Sports Center U Update. Let's try it again. Audio issues the first time around, but no issues with Terrell Pryor. This time a touchdown pass to Brian Robisky and early on the Buckeyes with a 14-0 lead. Did you hear me? So the Buckeyes, uh, as Kirk Herbstreet mentioned today on game day, they're going to change that offense up a little bit. A little play action, a few more passes, and that's what they've done. Speaking of passing, that goes for a first down. Brandon Harris on the stop for Miami, but after a 14-yard pickup by Austin Kelly on the receiving end. Hey, Buck, hey. you're an old Indianapolis Colts receiver. What about these Colts look-alike uniforms, huh? I like huh? them. I like them. I like them a lot, but I also like the productivity of what they're doing. They work to the short side of the field, and then Kurt Roper is coming back to the wide side. That's where you can beat Miami. They're so focused on stopping you on the other side. So first and 10 as Duke tries to answer that Miami touchdown drive. Duke has eaten up some time in this fast-paced first quarter. Gaping hole on the left side and strong running by the freshman Jay Hollings with an eight-yard pickup. Ryan Hill on the stop of the Hurricane. Well, I love the fact that they're going behind their big weapons on the left side. Keep it right there. You see, those two guys are going to open things up here. He's going to have that hole to run through, and it's because of key blocking by Kyle Hill and Cameron Goldberg. You see that hole open up, and then you have 83 coming over the top, Austin Kelly. It's synergy in that offensive line. That off week really paid dividends for that inside run game. Jay Hollingsworth takes a hard shot. No gain, gets it back to the line of scrimmage. Anthony Reddick came up, laid the wood on Hollingsworth. Another one of the young people from North Carolina. Duke had gotten away from signing these North Carolina kids, Buck. I mean, you live in this state, and Cutcliffe's main idea of recruiting is let's get these kids back to Duke. Well, it makes sense because Duke is such a small school, and if you can get the people in the community behind you, it makes a di big dividend. New quarterback, Zach Asak in. Two of five on third down conversions so far. The Duke Blue Devils. Asak keeps it himself. 
puts his head down and gets the first down. Anthony Reddick on the stop. ASAC, a terrific story, comes in as a change of pace. Young man who three years ago was on the ACC All-Freshman team, then unfortunately uh, got caught plagiarizing a paper, and he admits it, hey, I made a mistake, left the program, now is back, and he's lost his starting job, but he's been a valuable asset this year. Well, and the funny thing about it, he and Thaddeus Lewis, when they came in together, Thaddeus Lewis was an athlete. Got a little soft, he even said. I got bigger. I needed to get smaller and get more physical. Zach Asak came back, and they, they worked very well together, Doug. Well, that was a fast-paced first quarter. Miami on top, 7-0. Blue Devils came out running that football. Hard-nosed football. Miami came out throwing the football. And they have a 7-0 lead. Missouri takes on Texas A&M, Sunday at 2.30, only on ESPNU. So I asked my dad where he wanted to go for his 60th birthday. Norway, he said, the land of our ancestors. We drank a pint at Ibsen's favorite pub. We sampled the local fare. We got new sweaters. It was the trip of a lifetime, Dad said, until we went to the Hall of Records and discovered we were actually Swedish. Two tickets to Stockholm, please. Whatever your story is, your city card can help you write it. Because city never sleeps. Ouch! Tired of getting nicks and cuts from blades that go ooh! Dull after just a few shaves? Now there's an easy way to save your money and your skin no matter what razor you use. Introducing Save-A-Blade, the ingenious razor sharpener that can give you up to 200 perfect shaves from a single blade. Just slide the razor inside, press the button, and in seconds your razor blade is like new again. It's truly like turning one razor blade into 40 brand new blades, saving you hundreds of dollars every year and giving you the perfect shave every time. The same technology used in commercial kitchens to sharpen and hone fine cutlery has now been adapted for the razor. Barber shops have always sharpened and honed their blades for the smoothest shaves, but the razor companies don't want us to know that we can too. Save a Blade Secret is our patented micro honing technology that sweeps across the blade at 60 revolutions per second to sharpen and renew your blade in one simple step. It works on all razors, men's, women's, cartridges, single blades, all the way up to five blade razors, even disposables. Independent laboratory testing proved that after 200 shaves, a razor sharpened with save a blade was virtually identical to a brand new blade. It's like shaving with a brand new razor every time. So why put up with the nicks and cuts from dull blades or spend extra money on those replacement blades that are so expensive when you can save your money and get a better shave with save a blade As an added bonus, you'll also receive our deluxe his and hers 18-piece grooming kit. It includes every grooming tool you need to always look your best. A $20 value, yours free. That's right, you get the save a blade razor sharpener and our deluxe 18-piece grooming kit, a $50 value for only $19.99. But wait, call now and get our $5 rebate offer. And get all this for only $14.99. Call 1-800-689-8685 to order Save a Blade for $14.99 plus shipping and handling after $5 mail-in rebate. Or send check or money order to the address on your screen. That's 1-800-689-8685. Miami on top 7-0 as we begin the second quarter at Duke. Doug Bell and Charles Arbuckle along with Abby Wainer, our campus connection reporter. Duke has churned up a lot of yardage and eaten up the clock so far. Well, on first down, Doug, they've averaged 5.1 yard per play. Miami on the other hand, 9 yards per play. To the ground game in Clifford Harris right up the middle. He gets pushed backwards after a gain of one yard, so it'll be second and nine. You, know, you can keep attacking Miami in the interior, but at some point, you're going to have to challenge them down the field. Andrew Smith made that stop for Miami. Another freshman. So many young players, first and second year players, on this roster for Randy Shannon. I've enjoyed uh, talking with Randy the last two weeks. Really feel I. I have a feel for what he's trying to accomplish here, trying to bring this program back. Got that pass wide open, and Duke is going to tie the score. No, Riley 
gets tripped up by his own shoelaces, and he's down at the three-yard line. Clifford Harris threw the pass to Eron Riley, 39 yards. They worked on that in practice, Doug, and Eron Riley was so open, even in practice, that he did. He tripped up on himself. This is a great job of setting it up. Sooner or later, I said he had to attack vertically. Look at him. He's so open that he catches the ball. and so excited he can't get it into the end zone. But they worked on this in practice this week, and it came to fruition in the game. Here's back to Clifford Harris. Harris trying to move that pile forward. Joe Joseph, big number 91 in there, wraps him up. And Riley once again, 20 consecutive games with a grab. In fact, 35 of the last 36, he is the go-to guy for Duke. Hey, Doug, but the only thing is you have to come away, in my mind, with the touchdown against this Miami Hurricane team. And a field goal is good, but after having that big play, you need to capitalize on that momentum. Second and goal again as they look to the sidelines. Richard freshman quarterback uh, Mike Capetto is over there. Along with a graduate assistant giving those signals. And Miami will call timeout. Miami wasn't quite sure. They weren't sure what the personnel grouping. It was a bunch set. And they didn't have enough folks over there. Let's join Lowell Galindo in the studio for a Sports Center U in-game update. Guys, Terrell Pryor is absolutely on fire. Five of five passing in this game. Beautiful ball to Brian Hardline, who does most of the work, takes it to the two. Chris Wells would punch it in. 21 nothing. Buckeyes. Well, that's impressive. Uh, that, that's a little bit of a surprise. I thought Michigan State would keep that a little closer as you look at the top 25 now. Texas, Mizzou a little bit later on. Alabama playing Ole Miss right now. And then down the line we go. You know, Doug, we talked about it on our show this past week, though. They had to take the handcuffs off of Terrell Pryor, and it seems like they're doing that now. Wake Forest behind at Maryland last report. Pittsburgh playing the Naval Academy in Annapolis today. Second down and goal for the Blue Devils. See this bunch formation last time seemed to have gotten Miami off kilter. So now they have it defended a lot better. Tenth play of the drive. Another time-consuming march for Duke. Oh, yeah. Cooper Harris ran right into Daryl Sharpton, who delivered a blow. See, they had man, Daryl Sharpton bringing the funk, bringing the noise. Let me let you hear it in real time. Ooh. Hey, you want to play football? <laughs> you better love hearing that. I'm feeling it. I like that all them nicks on the helmet. Junior from Coral Gables. Grew up very close to that Miami campus. Had all, always dreamed of playing for the U. Looking to the outside, stretching for the goal line. Touchdown, Clifford Harris. Stretch for the touchdown. And it's 7-6. to six. That was an impressive march, Buck. Well, how fitting is it that the guy that got him down there with the long pass go, Clifford Harris, gets to get in for six. Good play call also. Look, they come inside. Everybody's in there. It's one-on-one. -on -one. If he beats him, he's in for six. Has a chance to do it against Sean Spence, one of the best linebackers and young players on this Miami ball club. I think they're going to take a look at this. So they'll review to see if the ball broke the plane before his knees were down as we watch the replay. It is under review right now. And, Charles, what do you think? Let's take a look here. I mean, you know, he works inside it's hard to see from that angle if his foot went out of bounds but a good one-on-one -on -one. you have one-on-one -on -one play see right there that's a tough one to see Doug this might be a better that's, angle that's a better angle watch right his knees did his knees touch no his knees didn't touch I think it's a touchdown I think it's six because he was laying on Sean Spence and the ground caused the fumble at least that's from my vantage point. Knees were not a factor. And did the ball come out? And that's a play that Sean Spence usually makes, but Clifford Harris with a lot more physical. I think it's a touchdown. It is a touchdown. And Clifford Harris celebrates his first receiving touchdown of the season. And Recon Boyetta very close. So Recon was in tears in the first game against James Madison. He said he was going to go out and have a great game for him and a great season. 
Nick Maggio with the extra point. We're all tied up in Durham, North Carolina. Hey, when we come back, we'll look back at the Rose Bowl tradition of these Duke Blue Devils. Great story when we come back. So, how's my day look? Well, 9.30 to 1, you send funny pics to your wife. From 1 to 1.15, texting your son throughout recess. 1.15 to 3, exchanging flicks with your daughter. 3 to 4, texting aimlessly to everyone. And at 4, a budget meeting. Mm. I can push the meeting to another day. Let's go with that. Okay. Share more with your family. Get these three phones free when you buy select Motorola phones like the Moto 755 for $69.99. Verizon Wireless. Now, get huge biceps and massive shoulders. Get the V cut. A small looking waist and a big upper body with the perfect pull up. From the U.S. Navy SEAL inventor of the perfect push up, the perfect pull up changes the pull up bar into a complete upper body machine with two design advances. The perfect pull up's handles rotate with a natural movement of your arms and shoulders. And the perfect pull-up is the first pull-up bar with an adjustable swing arm. Start with a bicep burning standing row. Rip your shoulders and back with an Australian pull-up. Electrify your arms and upper body with rotational pull-ups. It's three exercises in one invention. It changes the game and gets you results. So here's the deal. Try the perfect pull-up for 30 days for only the cost of shipping and handling. You pay only $14.95. When you order, you'll receive the perfect pull-up adjustable bar and two rotating handles. You'll also receive the Navy SEAL inspired workout chart and when you call ask about the perfect pull-up ab straps for an off the floor ab workout the way the pros do it get ripped by the perfect pull-up any this month on direct tv pay-per-view you like playing football i love playing football it's your intention to legitimize professional football there appears to be an event happening what's going on we lost contact with whom everyone the staff doesn't belong to you you have to give to me or somebody might get hurt so we're just gonna go in there and kill him? No, I'm gonna ask him some questions. Then we're gonna kill him. Direct TV pay-per-view. Just press a button and you're watching your movie. This is a photo of our first lumber liquidator store. We didn't have a fancy showroom or an expensive location. Our goal was simple, to provide great hardware flooring at the best prices anywhere. Today, as the largest direct retailer of hardware flooring, we're still not fancy, we're still a bit out of the way, but we continue to have the best hardware flooring at unbeatable prices. Solid oak flooring as low as 99 cents a square foot. Bella Wood pre-finished solid hardwood flooring from $2.99 a square foot. Visit your local lumber liquidators or lumberliquidators.com. Clifford Harris, the touchdown dive at 7-7. That was an impressive march. 11 plays, 80 yards. And look at the time, they ate it up. Said it was important and imperative for Duke to come away with seven, not three. And you have to match that because Miami, with all that speed, Doug, it can change in an instance with a guy like Travis Benjamin. He's back there. He's looking at the time of possession. That's Duke's strategy. Let's keep it away from the speed guys. Let's keep it away from the playmakers. So far, so good. Joe Sergan will kick off. Benjamin will get the opportunity. You betcha. Looking for a gap. He's dangerous. Good coverage by Duke. One of the areas they've really improved. The ball breaks free, but he was down. Matt Daniels on the stop. You know, you go back to 1939. They were the Iron Dukes, undefeated, unscored upon. They go out to California, Pasadena, and they take on USC. Last play of the game, up 3-0. Could it be the perfect season? No, USC delivers the... Heart-wrenching touchdown. The wooden goalposts come down, and USC beats Duke seven to three. How would you like to be undefeated, unscored upon to the last play? I bet you. Woo. That's a tough one to take. <laughs> <laughs> now that was in Pasadena, California, and a great story coming up as Robert Marv continues to quarterback this Miami offense. We will see Jacory Harris at some point. Point, Greg Cooper. Check that. That's Jabari's James, his first carry. Now 1942, because of Pearl Harbor, they play the Rose Bowl. Wallace Wade here in this stadium. Oregon State travels here. They put in temporary bleachers, 56,000, right where we are today. And Oregon State beats Duke. 20 to 16. Wallace Wade had to make a deal with his players. They didn't want to play because of Pearl Harbor. He let him off for 10 days at Christmas. Offsetting penalties, 
And Buck, I tell people all the time, hey, the Rose Bowl, the only time it was never played in Pasadena was here. And many people don't realize yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's a great trivia question. A dinner party question. <laughs> <laughs> As you look at Randy Shannon, who was recruited by one David Cutcliffe when he was at the University of Tennessee. Wasn't that a great story? He said <laughs> he was a junior, and he was dunking with one step from the free throw line. He said, I knew he was going to be a great player. <laughs> he wanted him. <laughs> wanted him to come to Knoxville. Shannon stayed close to home, and the rest is history. Regarding his career. Javaris James, who's been out for three weeks with a high ankle sprain. Let's find out more about the legendary Wallace Wade from our Campus Connection reporter, Abby Wainer. Wallace Wade Stadium was named after the all-time winningest coach here at Duke. The roses surrounding his statue were a gift from the 1942 Rose Bowl Committee, and they're still maintained here today. Isn't that neat? Uh, those roses were sent here from the Tournament of Roses Committee in Pasadena because they were nice enough to host it here. And as I read that story, it was a remarkable story. Marv on first down. Looking deep, a dangerous throw that is picked off. That's the trouble. Adrian Idarko. That's a, a young mistake, Doug. You, you just said going into triple coverage, good mm. coverage by all of the Duke defenders. Clifford West Press with the pressure, but again, Marv just needed to run out of bounds or throw yeah. it away. Yeah, just get rid of that football, live to see another day. Watch here. There's good blocking up front. Repress is going to come out on the outside. Ogabasi chasing as well. All you do is get rid of it and live to see another day. You're outside the tackle box. Do not throw in the one, two, three defenders for only two receivers. I'm not a great math guy, but three is more than two, right? <laughs> so don't throw that ball there. Yeah, that was a bad decision. At this stage of the season, you should not be making those mistakes. And those are the things that they say with both those guys, Ja'Cory and Marv. And in their defense, usually Miami has quarterbacks that are juniors or, or sophomores before they actually play. Tony Jackson gets wrapped up immediately by Glenn Cook as we check in with Lowell Galindo in the studio for Sports Center U in game update. Oklahoma trying to bounce back from the loss to Texas in the Cotton Bowl. Kansas trying to get a win against the Sooners. And Jock Crawford helping the cause. The touchdown plunge ties the game at seven. That's where we are late in the first. All right, low keep is posted. Kansas can score on anybody. It's a matter of their defense can hold off that. Awesome Oklahoma offense and a flag down on the play. Miami defense offside again, Doug. That's another five free yards that they gave Duke. That is Lewis Smart. Free play for you on offense. See, Miami's defense, they want to come outside. at you. Defense, number 56. Five yards penalty from the previous spot. It remains second down. Like my man 56 LT said, like a pack of wild dogs. But you got to wait till the food is set out. Marcus Robinson wanted it a lot quicker. And that's what you want to do to defensive linemen to get them off balance. Hut, hut, hut. And that's what Thaddeus Lewis did on that play. Four penalties now in the Hurricanes for 20 yards. See another defender mm -hmm. jumping again. You see, and you re-trigger. It's hard for him to come off and then have to go back and then go again. Andrew Smith, the freshman. Lewis. Wide open the tight end. Big gainer for Duke on the outside, Brett Huffman. That goes for 20 yards. I like that play also. I love bootleg plays, but I love it when they go to the tight end. He's going to be set there. And see how you work one way. Thaddeus Lewis makes the fake. It even fakes out our camera guys who are usually pretty good. You see how he turned his shoulders? That makes the defense go one way. Watch, right there. See how Glenn Cook right there gets stopped? And Glenn is the guy that has to be in that area where the tight end is coming across. Huffman a big target at six feet five. And he's learning from one of the best. <laughs> yeah, he played in that football hotbed. That's one Ohio. And another one of those guys who've gotten in shape. Big hole. Tony Jackson just shoots through it. Ryan Hill comes up to make the stop. That's an 11-yard pickup. And Buck, let's talk about that. Talk about the whole first, and we'll talk about this conditioning aspect of Duke. Well, you got guys here coming off the ball, and that just gives you the room to work right there. Now, Fred Rowland sometimes gets picked on, but look at him blocking there. Good block by big Fred Rowland. 
And that makes it easy for Tony Jackson to come off the football. Jackson is a New York kid. A large contingent of alumni from the New York area. It's back to Jackson. Quick feet. Busted to the outside. What a beautiful run by Tony Jackson. Anthony Reddick on the stop. That's a 23-yard pop. You know they've done a good job, Duke, of really coming with the power game with Cliff Harris. And now what do you do? You come back with Tony Jackson. He's making people miss in that hole. And he shows you that speed outside. Good blocking down the field. You can see his eyes. Look, making one guy miss. Good running backs always tell you, I'm going to make the first miss. Then downfield, I got to do everything else that comes naturally. Lewis looks to the sidelines. Clifford Harris back in for Jackson. You saw him hitting his helmet there. Needed a blow. Duke was 79 yards on the ground. Going to the left. Clifford Harris gets wrapped up by Sean Spence. We talked about the conditioning of this Duke te team. It's been an emphasis for David Cutcliffe as we check in with Abby Wayner. Abby? Yeah, well, it's been a really big deal made about the conditioning change of this football team. He understands the importance of the weight room, but what Coach Cutcliffe has really emphasized has been their speed and agility and their conditioning. They told me about their running that they had during the summer, and a pretty miraculous thing if you think about how many football players are on a team. Every single player on their team completed their fitness test, and uh, our team just went through the same thing last week. We, we found out how hard it is to get 12 girls to finish a conditioning test, let alone an entire football team, so quite impressive from the Blue Devils. It has been an impressive transformation for this football team. Nice hands by Clifford Harris, looking for a block. Surges forward to Marcus Van Dyke on the stop. A 12-yard pickup for Duke. It's first and goal. Hey, Doug, you know one guy that's really happy with what's happening right now is Thaddeus Lewis. Guy out of Opelika, Florida. He's really doing a good job of managing the game. Nice, easy throw. Now, we saw Marv make that when he fired it in there. Thaddeus Lewis, real nice and easy toss. Makes it easy for your back to catch it and turn up the field. You look at the junior. From South Florida, it was again, they looked to the sidelines. 14 Floridians on this Duke ball club. So you know they want to beat the home state guys. To the ground game, Clifford Harris. Tackled by Glenn Cook. No gain, gets it back to the line of scrimmage. Look at the hands on the hips of all the Miami guys. They've been on that field a long time, Doug. Here's the Florida connection six from the Broward Dade area. Obviously, they have a lot of Carolina kids. The emphasis now is North Carolina football players. But they'll gladly take a player like Tad Lewis. Doug, I told Leon Wright I'd change. I'd give him my suit if I could come and play one more time. <laughs> he started laughing. He's out of St. Petersburg, Florida, left corner. Back to the ground, taking a lick is Clifford Harris. Daryl Sharpton stood him up, gets one yard closer to the goal line. Here's what David told us this week. Duke has all the capabilities in the world. Kids come here, see it, and even though they hear from others, hey, it's the same old Duke. People are finding out now and in the future that it is different. A lot of negative recruiting. Don't go. I mean, they're new coaches, but it's the same stuff. It, believe me, we've been here all week. It is not yeah. the same stuff. Seven of his nine coaches also were on the staff at Ole Miss, Doug. And when you're trying to change the culture and the mindset, that helps having guys that know what you want. Robinson in at fullback, and they give it to the fullback. He gets stood up. Oh, no! He crossed the goal line. Daryl Sharpton stood him up. The big Tyler Robinson, he fought his way and broke the plane. Daryl Sharpton has been smashing guys. Looking like his coach, Michael Barrow. Watch 50. This is football action right there, people. Taking helmets off. Still, Tyler Robinson with enough strength after he dislocated his ankle, getting his sixth year. Oh, man. That's close. They that, will review that play to see if he broke the plane. I'm not sure he I did. I don't know if he did, but Daryl Sharpton, that goes on his highlight reel. I mean, he's been flying around the football, Doug, and now that one right there. Woo. But he caught him at the right. See, he was the one coming over at the top perfectly. Now, right there, you can't see where the ball comes out, but it doesn't look like he breaks the plane. The line judge was late on the call there. That's Les Flora. 
terrific camera work. I think the ball was short, but he was right there. Yeah. Flora had the angle. Well, Michael Barrow, another linebacker on this, my, on those my, great Miami teams, is the linebacker coach. Look at those eyes, yeah. Buck. Tyler Robinson. He wants he wants it to be a touchdown. He's the oldest player on the roster, more than five full years older than several of the freshmen. But Daryl Sharpton met him perfectly. It's going to be a tough call. The line judge right there is on it. But from that angle, it didn't look like the ball crossed the plane. Randy Shannon, the stoic one, never changes expression. He was worried about this game, and he, he mentioned it when we talked to him last week before our last game with UCF, and then now, really, this week, how tough Duke plays Miami. He says, man, every time we play them at home or we play them there, they always give us everything. Yeah. All right. At least from what we hear, I think a reversal is in order here. The replay, it didn't look to me like no. he crossed the plane. It looked it like didn't. he's just shy. Darrell Sharp did an outstanding job of meeting him at the highest point. Let's listen to Brad Allen. After review, the runner was down short of the goal line. The ball will be placed at the six inch yard line. It will be fourth and goal from the six inch line. <laughs> and he's saying, Tyler Robinson, let's run it again. They're going to kick this one. Oh, no, they're going to go for they're it. They're going for yeah, it, Buck. They're going to go for it. I, I like the attitude. I mean, if your coach makes you think you can win it, he has a, a phrase he likes to say earn the right to win. These are plays that earn you the right to win. Six inches away, Thad Lewis. His fullback, Robinson. And Harris dives into the end zone. Oh, it's a fake and a touchdown. Thad Lewis faked me out. Wow. But he'll take the touchdown. He faked Miami out. <laughs> that was a greatly executed play. You know who, who does a good job of ball handling? Peyton Manning. You learn in a cut clip. Eli Manning. Also, and Thaddeus Lewis on that one did an outstanding job of hiding that football. Watch here. Woo! That's, that's how you do it. Daryl Sharpton knew it, but it was a little too late. And the extra point is good. Nick Maggio. And there's Thad Lewis, the Miami kid. He's all smiles. We have a long way to go. But right now, it's the Blue Devils looking pretty sharp, leading 14-7. Check it out, gas prices blowing up sky high. Ditch my used sub compact for a two-wheeled ride. Now I'm rolling eco-friendly, but I still look bad. When the bike store saw my credit, they said this was all they had. I'm singing F to the R to the E to the E to the C to the R to the E D I T. Free to the port, to the dot, to the com. Come on, everybody, grab your bike and sing along. It's easy. With enrollment and triple advantage. Real deal is bad. The road to the top is full of bad breaks. All that. Dog, dog, what wrong with you, mama? Bad blood. Knocked on my way. Oh, from me first. With the ultimate bad boys. You ain't had it here since I hit Tina. <laughs> I'm gonna let a karate and kick your ass. Samuel L. Jackson, Bernie Mac. Because you were here, just want to wish you luck. So mad. We look good. My I'm sorry, man. I got on these tight slacks. Rated R. Everywhere November 7th. Just a few quick clicks and you found the directions you needed. Or that recipe you wanted. And now, just one click gets you everything you need to advance your career and increase your salary. Earn My Degree features hundreds of online degrees in business administration, education, nursing, and more. Online degrees are fast, flexible, and convenient. Perfect for busy professionals like you. You can browse by subject, degree, or school, and Earn My Degree will help find the perfect online program for you. And with 24 7 online convenience, you can earn your degree whenever, wherever you like, in as little as 10 months. Earn My Degree even includes valuable career, education, and financial information. It's everything you need to move ahead online. We've done all the legwork for you, so all you have to do is click. Visit Earn My Degree today. Go to the web address on your screen right now. Lowell Galindo here with your in-game update. Oklahoma trying to extend the nation's longest home winning streak. They take the lead with DeMarco Murray slipping off a tackle. Oh, you up 14-7. Lowell, thank you. Thad Lewis, the junior from Miami, Florida. 
Did you see him on the sidelines and then moments ago, coach cut eye to eye, head coach, quarterback, teacher, pupil. You know, Doug, and this is a good place for not only Duke to be, but for Miami. As a young team, you've got to find ways of getting hostile environments and come out of that. And you can do it in practice all you want, but for Robert Marr, or now maybe Ja'Cory Harris, because he usually gets some snaps in the first half, you've got to find ways to get your offense going. Joe Sergan will kick off, and Benjamin gets another opportunity. Hey, you betcha. Here he comes. He can tie it in a hurry. And once again, they do a nice job covering that kick. 56 is Damian Thornton, 17 yards on the return. Another area where Duke has improved, special teams. Yeah, they really have that speed and that conditioning, Duck. Offensive comparison, look at that now. Duke, 36 plays to 13, and the time of possession is yeah. Wow, that's really lopsided. And time of possession can sometimes be deceiving, but this has been pretty, <laughs> pretty true to form, Doug. I mean, if you look at all our rushing yards, 85 rushing yards for Duke. Now this is where it's dangerous. A penalty on Duke being offsides in the kickoff, so they'll re-kick, and Benjamin gets another shot. Yeah, he does. You know, and, and that's the one thing you don't want to do. You, you have everything going in your favor, and you give this young man another chance. He can take it to the house pretty quickly. He's used to down there in Bell Glade, Florida, chasing those rabbits out of the what Muck City they call it down there. Yeah, when they burn the uh, the sugarcane stalks after they've picked them, those rabbits scurry out of the underbrush, and the kids chase after them. And that's why they become they all yeah. say that's why they're so good. Everybody you talk to from that area can tell you why they are so gifted athletically, side to side. And look at the improvements penalties. Second, fourth, and, and they've gotten better in that area as well. More discipline and condition. When you get tired, sometimes you're out of position to make plays. So that, that stat shows you right there. A better conditioned ball club usually is better prepared to play. Sergan with another solid boot. And Benjamin gets another try. This time he goes to the right side. Look out, shifts into fifth gear, and they get him around the ankles. Boy, he is dangerous. That's a 30-yard return. Lee Butler got him right around the shoelaces and saved a huge game. Yeah, he, he has the ability every time he gets it. Now, the win back there is a factor. Does a good job of catching it. And then right there, turns on the juice, Doug. Right there. You see that gear? And Lee Butler holding on for dear life. <laughs> and our first look today at Ja'Cory Harris, the young man from Northwestern High down in Miami. He credits Thaddeus Lewis with really helping him develop on some weekend outings. He used to take him out and work with him, get him prepared to play the quarterback position because everybody thought Ja'Cory should have been a wide receiver. He, he calls Thaddeus Lewis his older brother. Here you see his numbers, 59%. Started the first game as Marv set out. He suspended that opening game and then He's going to back up ever since he goes to the ground. Cooper with a gain of one over the right side. And a real key with, with you got to love a name like Tawili Ely. <laughs> but what he can do on the field, watch here. His ability to run around and make plays, Doug, in the, in the run game. Doesn't get blocked. They're able to move around and make people miss and then finish. Flow, fill, and then finish those things. And also here turning the ball over. you got to have a guy that loves to come up and hit you. Boom! Nick knocks the ball out, creates offensive plays for those guys. Corey Harris had to throw off the back foot there. Goes to Chris Zellner, and Marcus Jones quickly wrapped him up. There you see Jones, just a one-yard pickup. Back and by, put the pressure on Ja'Cory Harris. You see Tawidi Ely. This is their size, but yeah. it's kind of like Zach Thomas. Well, and his weight loss is really helping. He likes to stay on the field. He's never tired now, Doug. They say he can stay. Him and Vincent Ray can play all game. And a, a day like today with the weather, perfect for him. One out of two, third down conversions, the U. Ja'Cory Harris. He'll go down, Marcus Jones. Seven yard loss, Jones on the sack. There you see. Big number 93, Charlie Hatcher on the bottom, but Jones was the ringleader of that group. 
Good job by the forefront. Forefront forward just doing a nice job of putting pressure on this Miami offense. Thought the line was going to hold up well, but that was an excellent job by them just coming off, creating pressure. Bosher back to punt. Donovan Varner. Lined up at the 33. Then you see Bosher from Jupiter, Florida. You know, Doug, the other problem is Miami doesn't turn the ball over much, so Duke has been able to play smart football and keep the football. Ooh, off the side of his foot. That's going backwards. That is ugly. Out of bounds at the 41. That is only a 15-yard punt. That hurts. The momentum shift has taken place in Durham. The home team licking their chops with another opportunity. An excellent field position. So here we are in the fourth quarter. No time left, and the touchdown is under review. Hey, guys, what do you think? We're not ready to go yet. Is there any way you can send this thing into overtime? Yeah. No problem. I don't know what he was looking at, but we're going into overtime. Buffalo Wild Wings, you have to be here. This could finally end it. Oh, my. I got $583 in cashforgold.com. All I did was look through my drawer full of jewelry that I never wear. Turn your unwanted or broken jewelry, gold, silver, platinum, rings, chains, and bracelets into cold hard cash from cashforgold.com. I had no idea my gold jewelry was worth so much money. With gold, silver, and platinum at their highest value in decades, cashforgold.com is able to give you top dollar for your unwanted jewelry. And because we own our refinery, we can cut out the middle man, which means more cash in your pocket. I sent in my diamond wedding band for my first marriage and got money the very next day. Just call the number below and ask for your free, prepaid, insured refiner's return pack. Fill the envelope with your unwanted or broken gold, silver, and platinum jewelry and mail it to our processing center. A safe, reliable transaction with satisfaction guaranteed. Call 1-800-970-6985. Call now. Own a timeshare? Turn it into cash. No more mortgage payments. Thank you, Timeshares Only. At Timeshares Only, you'll find properties from the biggest names in the industry. If you want to buy, sell, or rent, call now. Call Timeshares Only and get your free information kit with our insider secrets to buying, selling, and renting timeshares, plus receive a free $100 gift card. The over $5 billion sold in the past six months proves now can be the best time to sell. Call 800-366-5179. That's 800-366-5179. ESPNU College Football is brought to you by FreeCreditReport.com. Stay on top of your credit report at FreeCreditReport.com. Short punt. It was a shank from Matt Bosher. We saw Bosher do that one time last week at Dolphin Stadium. Other than that, he had a pretty good day. Bill Young's defense is in a precarious situation. They need a game-changing play, turnover, or something to stop this Duke offense from just driving the ball down the field in a short field, though. Clifford Harris finding another gap. Darrell Sharpton on the stop, but not before an eight-yard pickup by Clifford Harris. The defense just does not look comfortable, and that's, you can see here, rushing yards the first two games. Duke is doing very well. The last three games struggled. So this past week, inside run, where they just take the linemen and the key guys inside against those key guys on the defensive side. And really working. Coach Cutcliffe said they had some spirited practices in the run game. I've never seen inside run drill. I bet you they were going at it this week. <laughs> the Oklahoma drill. Oh, yeah. They were doing that a bunch of times. You know it. Second down. This time over the right side. And once again, Clifford Harris. Picks up three, and the time is just ticking away. Stephen Wesley on the stop. More college football tonight on the U. It's the Southeastern Conference, Arkansas against the Wildcats in Lexington. And then at 10 Eastern, it's FAMU against Southern. College football primetime presented by City on the U. Presented at crystal clear, high definition. Remember ESPNU.com for all the latest in college athletics. Video, audio highlights, podcasts, live streaming games. It's a whole lot more. ESPNU.com. 
There you see Brian Morgan, that undersized center from Hoover, Alabama. Lewis on the outside. Threw it high. Rafael Chestnut, the intended receiver, really wasn't open. There's a few passes that he's missed on, Doug, and he's been pretty accurate today. Chavez Grant, who plays left corner for Miami, is 5 0 in high school and college versus Thaddeus Lewis. And they text each other back, and I know they were talking to each other. Ojimo, also, who's not, who hadn't played a whole lot today, defensive end, and he are very close as well. Lewis is 6 out of 10 for 66 yards. Has that uh, one touchdown. Harrison receiving in, and he dove it across. Broke the plane. Ooh, that was pretty pass. Ron Riley, I got out of the corner of his eyes, peripheral vision, he saw you defender coming at him yeah. hard. And he's struggling with his hands. You know, That's a bad foul. Just can't quite put it away. It didn't look like he was looking, but he clearly didn't put that one away. Third down and 10. Probably the snap, flag down on the play. And that is picked off Bruce Johnson. A rare interception for the Hurricanes. They're only their fourth of the season. But it's going to come back. Out of Wally Ojimo. And another late flag after the tackle. But we're concerned with that flag right at the line of scrimmage. At the point of attack, the snap, the flag was thrown. Yes. Out of Wally Ojimo, the defensive end was offsides. 97. That'll bring up third down and five for Duke. The white hat again is Brad Allen. We called a Virginia game a few weeks ago, and they called my room. Said, Mr. <laughs> Allen, your ride is ready. And I said, I'm just the announcer. You need to call Brad Allen the official. Well, Old Jamo and Thaddeus Lewis went to Bible school together. Fair foul by either team on the play. Offsides, 15 of the defense. Personal foul, face mask of the offense during the return. By the by rule, those fouls will offset. We will replay the down. That's a that's a big loss for Duke. That's a big loss for Duke. The reason why is because they had five free yards. You can see down there, Ojimo is gonna be off sides. Thaddeus Lewis really on that hard count, you see? He got his buddy. <laughs> Said he's been texting them all week. Now, the play is free basically for the offense, but in here, during the course of the action, there's a face mask penalty. So you don't get those five free yards, you're losing. Once again, third and ten. And Morgan calling those offensive line signals. Lewis has all oh, day. That's completed, it'll be short. For the first down, just a nine-yard pickup. That goes to Rafael Chestnut. But Doug, if they get that five, those five yards from that offside penalty, they clearly would have the first down. Thaddeus Lewis does a good job of setting inside. The blocking up front is good. He feels the pressure and gets outside and gets the ball down to Rafael Chestnut. So fourth and about a yard and a half. They're two for two so far in fourth down conversions today. The other problem with it also, too, this wind has been up and down. It'll blow real hard for a while, go away. And right now, it's not blowing quite as hard. I think they're going to talk this one over. Good look at David Cutcliffe. Use as much. They've used the clock a lot, too. It's been good clock usage. You know, David Cutcliffe, you saw that close-up of him. And several years ago, when he almost took the Notre Dame, or actually, he was on the job in Notre Dame for uh, the quarterback's coach for Charlie Weiss, and he had gray hair, overweight, had that health issue, had to go to the hospital. It was very serious, and now you look at him, colors back in his yeah. face. He's lost a lot of weight. Very happy David Cutcliffe to be a head coach once again. He really is. It's, of course, he loves working with his quarterbacks, uh, Peyton Manning, Eli Manning, T. Martin, Eric Ainge at Tennessee, Heath Schuler, and what about... Thad Lewis following in the footsteps of those great signal callers. He really is. He's a visualization guy. He said when he was in his sleep, his mom said he could see him, see him twitching. He's visualizing these kind of plays. And also, they helped him get there. Kurt Roper and David Cutcliffe pulled out tape of Eric Ames and Eli Manning and even Peyton Manning. You see that ball handling? 
That's what those guys do very well. David Cutcliffe, and I talked to Thaddeus Lewis earlier this week, he said, he just, every little thing, I know so much better. He said, last year I thought I could do it, but now with the conditioning that I have and the, the fundamental learning of the quarterback position, I know I can execute almost everything. And another player who is in much better physical condition. In fact, when Cutcliffe and his staff took over back in the spring, first practice, Cutcliffe blows the whistle halfway in and said, guys, I'm sick to my stomach. <laughs> you guys are the worst condition football team I've ever seen. And he was talking, looking right at the quarterback. He said, you guys are soft and fat. <laughs> He has certainly changed the culture right here in a short time. A 40-yard field goal attempt now for Nick Maggio. Five or six this season. After a good start. Maggio worked hard in the offseason. And he drilled it. So Nick Maggio, six of seven on the year. It's 17 to seven, Duke. Let's go back to the sidelines, check in with our campus connection reporter, Abby Wayne. There's so many special programs here at Duke academically. And Abby, you're going to tell us about one of the really special ones, aren't you? Yeah, well, one of the programs is called CAPE, and it stands for Collegiate Athlete Pre-Med Experience. And it was founded by neurosurgeon Dr. Henry Freeman, who saw a correlation between people in the medical staff and student athletes. They all require high levels of discipline, dedication, and really just a desire to be the best. These students get to have uh, clinical uh, clinical experiences and a mentoring program that they otherwise wouldn't have because they simply don't have enough hours in the day that other students do who are pursuing medical school. Interesting. Uh, you know, as I walked around campus yesterday, number one, it's a gorgeous campus. Yeah, gothic buildings. Ah, the architecture yeah. is unbelievable. Uh, you sense these kids are pretty serious about their academics here on the oh, campus. Oh, they are. And Doug, the other thing, too, is that they finally capitalized. That Coach Cutcliffe and his former strength and conditioning coach, they wanted to bring this together and really get these guys losing weight, but you're at one of the premier places of weight loss. And so 500 pounds among the whole team of losing weight. Now Miami is a well-conditioned team too, but you take not only being in better conditioning, but then also some of the other things, everything you have here. When we talked about Duke, and you heard what Abby described, that terrific program. The highest graduation success rate uh, just out ACC. 75% of their athletes leave here with a degree. And Miami also has a very good graduation rate from what we saw last week when we were speaking with them for football. Benjamin now, two yards deep in his own end zone. Banks to the outside and gets taken down by Sergan, the kicker. And boy, are they fired up. Kicker. Wraps him up, and he's going to hear about that. He's going to be talking about that for a while. Well, he is, and I thought he was, the way he went down, I mean, he stops, and the kicker just levels him. <laughs> wow. Sergeant, one of those Florida kids you mentioned. <laughs> Man. <laughs> yeah, I was in shock. Joe Surgeon just did a great job of coming over and taking him out. Miami needs something positive here, though. They've got to finish this half with something good. That's 17 unanswered points by Duke. Remember, Marv led them on that early touchdown march. Ja'Cory Harris still in at quarterback. His second possession. Harris will take it himself. That's a big game. Wow. That's 23 <laughs> yards, almost as if he was trying to run out the clock, and he just, he just kept running. Well, Javoris James, watch number five with a good block in here on Vincent Ray and just enough to keep him from getting to Ja'Cory Harris. Number 31 getting blocked by five. He almost lost the ball late. That's caught. Oh, boy, that's good hands there. That's Diedrich Epps. Vincent Ray on the stop, and Epps has impressed me two weeks in a row. Big target, great hands. I like my partner Charles Arbuckle way back when. Coming up the half on Sports Center, you, Logan Lindo, and the coach, Coach Godfrey, who will have KU OU highlights. Crimson Tide against Ole Miss. And is Pryor stepping up big time or what for the Buckeyes? Yes. Stop by Tawili Ely. Good job. Good job by Duke of really defending that play, the short side of the field. 
Miami with their one of their two timeouts and just use it right there. Harris, one of the many kids on the roster from Northwestern High School, as you look at Marv. They're, they're close, these two kids, even though they're competing for the top job. But when you throw in the kids from Northwestern High, who were the best team in the country a year ago, 6A down in Miami, Booker T. Washington, number recruits, the top 4A team, and then St. Thomas Aquinas, uh, that's another school, yeah. a championship program. That's how Randy Shannon's rebuilding this program. But it just goes to show you, no matter how good you were in high school, how difficult it is to make that transition. And, you know, talking to Randy about that, you got to sprinkle in some veteran guys and even though they have some at their skill positions where it's so hard at quarterback those are the areas where you struggle coaching at the alma mater sometimes it's good sometimes it's uh, not a couple of those guys there earlier Al Groh was in trouble they've since gotten better Phil Fulmer yeah <laughs> Randy Shannon loves the year Duke is feeling it boy we're going for win number four Wow, since they've been bowling, 1994. That's, did he catch it? I'm not sure he's in bounds. Yes, they're going to give him the catch. Well, the one official was getting ready to call it off, and then the other one came down from the back to call that a completed pass. Corey Harris with a nice throw. I don't mm. know. Well, Darius Johnson, did he get that foot down? Let's see. Coach Cut wants to know, did you really see it? Because the line judge was saying one, and Phil Judge said another. And now Darius Johnson was trying to toe tap on the sideline, but the ball kind of took him away. Let's see right here, Doug. One foot is down. Does he have control of the ball with that one foot down? You see the dirt coming up from his left foot. I think his feet were down. Yeah. Did he have the ball? That's the key. His left foot is down right there. The ball is tucked away. That's a good catch. Yeah. All you need is one foot mm -hmm. in college football. Be a nine yard pickup. As you look at David Cutcliffe uh, from Birmingham, Alabama, went to Hayes High School. And remember Jeff Rutledge and Tony Nathan, the great All Americans from the University of Alabama. That's who he went to school with. He attended the University of Alabama where he was. A student coach with a great Bear Bryant. Yeah. Look at that foot right there. The ball is tucked away, and the other angle show. The other angle really showed it too. Right there, you see, he has, he has the ball in his hand. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Yeah. It is a catch. Third down. And that's a good play by a young receiver, Aldarius Johnson. Aubrey Hill, the wide receiver coach, he's a Florida grad. Understand receiving does a good job working with these young guys. Boy, nice crowd on hand. This is the biggest crowd, home crowd they've had all season. And perhaps the biggest crowd they've had when we get the numbers they've had in several years. It's homecoming at Duke. Miami trying to get on the board before halftime. Harris has oh, had Benjamin open, and they just couldn't hook up. That's what he wants back. Now he made a great throw on the other one just missing his speedster who had some open field out there. But I like Ja'Cory Harris and, and I like Marv. It's just a matter of who's going to be the one to take the job. Even though Marv is the starter now, it seems like this team, the last few weeks we've seen them, they play with a different attitude when Ja'Cory Harris is in the game. But Marv has made some plays as well. Fourth down and two. Instead of a long field goal, they will go for it. And they get it. First down and more. That's all there is. Johnson run out of bounds by Adrian Idarko. A 12-yard pickup. Doug, Lee Butler was in, indecisive. And when you're indecisive in football, it usually means something going the other way. See, he wanted to pick, didn't not quite know, and didn't attack it. Now, Darius Johnson, who's made two huge catches on this drive. Lee Butler, the freshman out of Anderson, South Carolina, who they think is going to be an outstanding player here at Duke. They really like Lee Butler. First and ten. The U with one timeout remaining in this first half. Ja'Cory Harris has a wide open out. Darius Johnson. Michael Tower Ely Ely on the stop, a six-yard pickup, and the time is ticking down, and they call the timeout. 
with 17 seconds remaining. Look at the two young freshmen playing very well together. Both went to high school together. You can see the synergy there, though. <laughs> he didn't panic. He felt the pressure. He's the leading receiver on the team, Al Darius Johnson is, in the receiver position. And Ja'Cory Harris doesn't panic. He slides over and does a nice job of putting it right on the floor. Harris has come in five out of six now for 38 yards. The ACC, what a wacky situation right now. Virginia Tech appears to be in the driver's seat. They had that win over Georgia Tech. So Georgia Tech would need some help. Keep winning and need some help in order to win the Coastal Division and go to the ACC Championship. And I think Florida State hey, let's, is looking pretty good right yeah, now. Yeah, let's not forget about Virginia, the way they've been playing lately. I mean, you know, you look at this and you say, okay, those one and one teams, North Carolina, Duke, and Virginia, and then you go down to the bottom, you have a few there. Wake Forest, who kind of laid an egg today. But Maryland, who we saw earlier, has been night and day different since they played Clemson. Second and four. The ball is on the nine-yard line. Ja'Cory Harris into the end zone. Touchdown, Miami. Chris Zellner had the defensive back turned around Lee Butler. And he makes a nice grab, gets the big mitts around it. Yeah, corner route by receiver, which Miami loves to do on that backside. And Lee, Chris Zellner, runs a nice route into the boundary. He's a, it's a mismatch. You got the cornerback, who's a smaller guy. Chris Zellner, athletic at 6'2", 240, wins that battle. Jabori Harris with a nice drive. Mm, that was very nice. Bosher now for the extra point. And Miami answers, 17 unanswered for Duke, and Miami just marches right down to score. Lee Butler, the true freshman, got turned around. Yeah, it's a tough place to defend, and when you're going against that big tight end out there, he's, it's one-on-one -on -one coverage, and Lee Butler has to play there. And he can't quite find the football, and Zellner stays with it. That's his first touchdown catch on the year. All smiles on the Miami sidelines, and for good reason, because uh, it appeared that Duke had just strangled all the life out of the Miami roster, and Harris brings it right back down. You can say 100%. 5-5 <laughs> passing on that drive. Now, I can hear what Randy Shannon and Patrick Nick say, but Ja'Cory Harris looked very good on that drive. And we saw him last week look very good at times. When you're 30, what, you know? 37 and 0 as a starter never lost uh, in high school and the first game this year so that's that big strike ability for Miami 15 of 20 offensive touchdowns and drives of three minutes or less eight under one minute you, you can't sleep on Miami and when Duke had a chance to score a touchdown and go up 21 to 7 that's what you need to try to do because Miami is so quick as poorly as they play sometimes, they can come back and make you look so bad on defense like that. Bosher will kick off as you look at Randy Shannon. A little more animated, the coach. That's what he saw in that. Bosher with the pitching wedge. And the fair catch called for by Duke with 11 seconds remaining. That was Ryan McFadden. Good heads up play. Uh -huh. Calling the fair catch there. And then Tyler Robinson telling him, get that hand up higher. This is how you, he's showing him how to do a fair catch real time. <laughs> McFadden so, said, hey, I don't do this often. Man, leave me alone. <laughs> so here comes Thaddeus onto the field. And I, something tells me he's going to go down on one knee. And Duke will go into the locker room with that three-point cushion. Miami gets the ball to start the second half. Remember, they won the toss and deferred. And I think we'll see, uh, I always say that, and Coach cool. Shannon surprised me. I think we'll see Ja'Cory Harris to start the third quarter, but I don't know. Well, they said he wasn't going to play, Patrick Nix. So I don't know either. But after that drive, if you don't give him a little love in the second half, I don't know what's wrong. Our score at the half, Duke 17, Miami 14. Now let's join Lowell Galindo and Coach Gottfried with Sports Center U. That's where we begin with Coach Godfrey. And, and Coach, can teams look back? I know you always say look ahead. Do they look back? Yes, they will look back. 
They're looking back on Texas. Well, Sam Bradford finds Matt Clapp. Sooners up 7-0 over the Kansas Jayhawks. But then Jock Crawford, two-yard touchdown run. We are tied at seven. But the Sooners also, let's they get a little something going around the ground game. DeMarco Murray spinning off the tackle. Oklahoma up 14 to seven. Kansas drives the field. It looks like they have a shot to really tie this one up. What do you make of this decision from Todd Reese? Well, it took so much time. Nobody's open, but all of a sudden he gets it picked off. And sometimes you buy time, you find a receiver. He found a defensive guy. Well, right now, Oklahoma also dealing with the loss of wide receiver Manny Johnson. Hurt his left arm. He is out for the game. Not expected to return in this one. When we watch Oklahoma, you go back to one week ago against Texas. The rushing numbers were not there. When you see him in this game, does it seem like they are going away from what has been in years past their bread and butter? I believe they are. I think you hit a good point there. They're not running the football. 62 yards rushing in the first half here against Kansas. Couldn't run last week against uh, Texas. Not doing it today either. Well, a lot of time left to play in this one. Yeah, in Oklahoma, Eat they're using that balance to their advantage. 21 straight wins at home, the longest active home winning streak. Texas Tech takes down Texas A&M, and all day you were asking me, who does Tech have next? And I kept saying Texas. And yeah, two weeks, they're still getting ready for Texas. It's they Oklahoma have Kansas. State. Yeah. Kansas. Oklahoma State. No, Kansas. Texas has. I'm confused. Okay. Oklahoma State, though, taking down Baylor 28 to 6. They have let's, Texas. Texas. Let's take Oklahoma with this State. week. How about we do well, that? That's, that's what we do That's know. a really trap game right here. Oklahoma State, pretty impressive in this outing. Talk about impressive. Ohio State and Michigan State. The Buckeyes open up with an impressive performance from Terrell Pryor. We will show you just how good those numbers are. And Vanderbilt looking for elusive number six. They were close. Did they get that against Georgia? <laughs> People say I'm pretty obsessed with speed. Come to think of it, I like to do everything fast. When I started training for Beijing, I wanted to learn Chinese. So I got Rosetta Stone. They say it's the fastest way to learn a language, guaranteed. Fast. I like that. Rosetta Stone is not boring memorization. It's a system that lets you learn a language naturally, the way your brain is wired to learn. And Rosetta Stone uses speech recognition to coach you on the correct pronunciation, which will get you speaking quicker than ever. Call now for more information and get a free demo CD, because when it comes to learning a new language, speed is everything. And go. <sighs> Rosetta Stone, the fastest way to learn a language, guaranteed. Call now. I told you guys, under a minute. <laughs> what's so cool about ESPNU? It's what's important to me. 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 It's college sports knowledge at my fingertips. Awesome! <laughs> Take a closer look and develop your mind and spirit at ESPNU. I love this place! You can bring big air flying indoors with the all-new Havoc Cyclone Stunt Plane. It's one of the easiest and most fun flying RCs ever. The indoor flyer launches right from your hand, and it's so easy to fly. Its center mount prop engine and sleek airframe makes extreme tricks easy to master. Hit a torque roll, touch and go, or a hammerhead turn. The infrared controller can charge and fly your Havoc Cyclone. Plus, its tri-band switch lets you fly up to three planes at once. Act now and you'll get the Havoc Cyclone, tri-band charger controller, tail streakers, adjustment kit, and an instructional DVD. You'll also receive the infrared booster to amplify your flying range. All for two payments of $19.95, plus shipping and handling. So grab your Havoc Cyclone today and master the skies with the next generation of indoor RC stunt planes. You must be 18 or older to order. You can call 1-800-308-8935. Bobby Stoops obviously listening to Coach Mike Godfrey said the Sooners were getting away from their bread and butter so they figure out how to 
go back to that. It's Chris Brown finding the edge, and that is the bread and the butter. Oklahoma now leading 21 to 10 late in the second quarter. In the SEC, Vanderbilt trying to go to Athens, Georgia, and get the win to get bowl eligible. McKenzie Adams got the start in this one, but he is picked off. Not a good way to start the ball festivities there. Matt Stafford then to A.J. Green, 17 yards for the touchdown. Bulldogs up by seven early on. Stafford back to work this time. Muhammad Massaqua. Stafford coming off a 300-yard performance. And Georgia taking this one 24 to 14. Ole Miss. And Alabama, the Crimson Tide trying to stay undefeated. But here's the shocking coach, Enrique Davis, throws 62 yards, sets up an Ole Miss field goal. So for the first time this season, Alabama gives up points in the first quarter, and they trail. End of the world, right? Yeah. Wrong. Wrong. You're exactly right. Good point. John Parker Wilson, the next possession. Marquise Mays. Bama up 70. 7 to 3, and then Terrence Cody in at fullback, paving the way for Mark Ingram. It's 14 to 3. JP Wilson Namath, a little flea flicker action this time to Mike McCoy. How about another touchdown? Alabama up 24 to 3. So we wanted to see what would happen when Alabama was tested, when they found themselves down in the ball game for the first time this season. Your reaction to the way the Tide reacted? You know, open date, they came out against Ole Miss. Uh, Ole Miss had that long run and they hit the field goal. But Alabama has answered. They've been physical on the offensive line. They've had big plays. John Parker Wilson threw that pass. After he got the ball back from the tailback, they're taking and chances. I want to make one early prediction. Make that. Alabama's going to get beat. I'm not sure I'm going to pick it next week, but Tennessee's going to have a chance to upset them next so week. So you already think they've won this game against Ole Miss. They've won this game. They're going to salt it away in the second half, but next week, my upset special may be Tennessee. Well, you can't look ahead. We always and know look about ahead. that. Ohio State now looking ahead. Who do they have next week? Penn State. Very good. We got that one correct finally. But here and now, take it on Michigan State. Terrell Pryor, really phenomenal. Before this, had a huge block on a run for Beanie Wells. That's an 18-yard touchdown. Buckeyes up 7-0. They wanted to see him throw the ball. How did he look when he did? Through the ball, he pushes the ball a little bit, but he still gets it there. And he's so big and powerful, it's hard to bring him down. Makes it 14 to nothing. Then to Brian Hartline, watch this play. In traffic, takes it down to the two-yard line. Chris Wells would punch it in, but prior to the story, 7 of 9, 116 yards and a touchdown, 47 rushing yards and a touchdown prior there. So, you know, Penn State can't oh, look ahead. Man. To Michael State. Well, when you're Joe Paterno, some people will equate him to that in Happy Valley. You got some defense going on early. You see a stuff there for Penn State. Nittany Lions defense doing some work, but you can't stop Brandon Miner all the time. There's a touchdown for Miner. And Michigan up 7 0. 10 0 game, but here we go. Look at Evan Royster takes a hit in the backfield, but keeps on chugging. Missed tackles by Michigan. Brandon Miner would respond with a one-yard touchdown to Michigan now, 17-7. to How do you explain this with how bad Michigan has been, how good Penn State has been? Michigan lost a very difficult game last week to Toledo. They're embarrassed. They're going to play their best ball game. Penn State looking ahead to Ohio State is not shown up yet, but they will come back. They will come back. That's what we are waiting to see. Penn State, though, down by 10. Up next, we will see if Missouri can bounce back from the loss to Oklahoma State. They only have to knock off number one in Austin. If you're in debt to the IRS for $10,000 or more, you don't have to take desperate measures to settle your account. All you have to do is put the right people to work for you. And that's as simple as calling this number. You'll speak to a tax expert who can help you negotiate a settlement that's significantly less than the actual amount you owe. They saved my business. I owed $30,000 and paid a fraction of it. Call this number and get your case settled for less. Now, you only have a small window of time to settle, so act now.
Just a few quick clicks and you found the directions you needed. Or that recipe you wanted. And now, just one click gets you everything you need to advance your career and increase your salary. Earn My Degree features hundreds of online degrees in business administration, education, nursing, and more. Online degrees are fast, flexible, and convenient. Perfect for busy professionals like you. You can browse by subject, degree, or school, and Earn My Degree will help find the perfect online program for you. And with 24-7 online convenience, you can earn your degree whenever, wherever you like, in as little as 10 months. Earn My Degree even includes valuable career, education, and financial information. It's everything you need to move ahead online. We've done all the legwork for you, so all you have to do is click. Visit Earn My Degree today. Go to the web address on your screen right now. Hey, you have your tickets right? <laughs> to what, you ask? Well, the... Oh, the Dr. Pepper ACC Football Championship. The 48-hour celebration of ACC football played this year in beautiful Tampa Bay, Florida. You know, palm trees, sandy beaches, and this year, a lot of ACC football action. So get your tickets now for the December 6th Dr. Pepper ACC Football Championship. Because if you wait too long, it may be too late. Hey, Greeny, Golic, it's me, Chad. I, I listen every day. All right, thank you. Sometimes it's like we finish each other's sentences. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if we finish each, each other's, other's sentences. sentences. Huh? <laughs> well, All right. We, we, we got to go? go? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> have, have, have a nice, nice day. day. Utah has now won 20 straight games when playing as a ranked team. And speaking of 20, Brian Johnson gets 21 wins. He ties Alex Smith for the most victories for a Utah quarterback. Utes taking down Colorado State 49-16. to An update now from Owen Field in Norman, Oklahoma, Kansas. Still sticking around trying to make this one a ball game. Todd Reesing, Desmond Briscoe. What happened there? The corner fell down. <laughs> He fell. Oh, that works that's, for me. That's what happened? 21 to 17. Now you picked the upset in this one. No, 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 uh, no, you, you no. Did it. The upset is a uh, portion in uh, state holds them under 100. <laughs> Mark Sanchez, Patrick Turner, Trojans up seven nothing, and it's Patrick Turner again. Why 15 did, yards. Yeah, but he's covering anybody. Did they fall down there, Coach? No, oh, they missed the tackle. Ronald Johnson, another score. USC rolling. It's now 41 0. Uh, I think it's pretty safe to say who's going to win there. We don't know about this one, though. Missouri and Texas, 8 o'clock Eastern time coming up on ABC. The Longhorns 4 0 against the Tigers under Mac Brown. And we saw what they did one week ago against Boomer Sooner. If Texas wants to come out of this as the number one team in the nation again, what do they have to do right? going to be a close game no matter how you look at this game. Missouri's going to bounce back. I know you're saying no. Missouri's going to bounce back. Colt McCoy can take advantage of Missouri's pass defense. They're giving up 271 yards passing a game. And Colt McCoy will take advantage of that. Rollouts, drop back pass, play action. And where he's so dangerous, he runs the football. He'll take tuck it and take off. And the drives for Texas have been a little longer than teams like Oklahoma, who scored quickly one week ago. Missouri, also one of the fastest scoring teams in the nation. So 1896, last time Zoo won in the city of Austin. Thad Lewis, little fake, little touchdown, and very quietly, quietly Duke with the lead. Power tools have evolved. The Lithium Ryobi One Plus tools work at full power twice as long with a battery that fits all your other One Plus tools. Ryobi One Plus. Pro features, affordable prices. You'll find them only at the Home Depot. Own a timeshare? Turn it into cash. 
No more mortgage payments. Thank you, Timeshares Only. At Timeshares Only, you'll find properties from the biggest names in the industry. If you want to buy, sell, or rent, call now. Call Timeshares Only and get your free information kit with our insider secrets to buying, selling, and renting timeshares, plus receive a free $100 gift card. The over $5 billion sold in the past six months proves now can be the best time to sell. Call 800-366-5179. That's 800-366-5179. My major is International Comparative Studies and Chinese, and I'm working with a biology professor, working in Africa. That's one of the great things about Duke is you're not restricted by the confines of your major. There's no limits. You know, when you come out of a class, you feel like a changed person. Right now I'm pre-med, but ask me next week and it, the answer could be different. I love my students. This is really the global education that I came to Duke looking for, and I found it. I've reached another level in terms of knowing who I am. Discovering the use of knowledge is education. on Channel 602. Watch TVG for exclusive coverage leading up to the Breeders' Cup World Championships October 24th and 25th. Live horse racing, 17 hours a day, seven days a week, all year long. Check out TVG, Channel 602. Hi, welcome to Progressive.com. How can I help you? Well, I haven't shopped for car insurance in a while. And you're worried that you've been paying too much, right? Yeah. So how can I know I'm getting a good deal? We can compare your progressive direct rate with other top companies. Wow. Seriously? Yeah. Look at the deal we just got him. That's a new pair of shoes. Yeah, or a big tricked out name tag. Making sure you get a great deal. Now that's progressive. Call or click today. Welcome back to the Sports Interview Halftime Report. North Carolina and Virginia. Looks like the Cavs have figured out how to play offense. Tar Heels looking for some offense with Brandon Tate out for the season. Tip. Hakeem Nix, we said this is the guy that has to step up. 22-yard gain from North Carolina. Then on the very next play, Sean Drawn, the converted safety. He's got some moves. 18-yard gain. UNC really finding the rhythm early on. Later in the drive, capping it off with Ryan Houston. That's how you put the body on the line. That's the way you go in, in from the one-yard line. And also Virginia not having too much success with their offense, 73 total yards. Carolina up 7-3. to three. And Georgia Tech taking down Clemson, 21-17. Second half action coming up is Chris Zellner with a touchdown for the Miami Hurricanes out of Sarasota Booker High School. Go Tornadoes. Second half next. Here we are, bottom of the night, two outs. Coach Adams is making a call to the bullpen. Hey, guys, who do you want me to bring in? Man, is anyone ready to go yet? No. Send in Mahoney. You got it. Wait a second, he's bringing in Mahoney. This could be a long night. Here comes the pitch, and it's all tied up. Looks like we may be heading into extra innings. Buffalo Wild Wings, you have to be here. Bottom of the 15th, popped up. This game won't end. I got $583 from CashForGold.com. All I did was look through my drawer full of jewelry that I never wear. Turn your unwanted or broken jewelry, gold, silver, platinum, rings, chains, and bracelets into cold hard cash from CashForGold.com. I had no idea my gold jewelry was worth so much money. With gold, silver, and platinum at their highest value in decades, CashForGold.com is able to give you top dollar for your unwanted jewelry. And because we own our refinery, we can cut out the middleman which means more cash in your pocket. I sent in my diamond wedding band for my first marriage and got money the very next day. Just call the number below and ask for your free, prepaid, insured refiner's return pack. Fill the envelope with your unwanted or broken gold, silver, and platinum jewelry and mail it to our processing center. A safe, reliable transaction with satisfaction guaranteed. Call 1-800-970-6985. Call now. If you're in debt to the IRS for $10,000 or more, you don't have to take desperate measures to settle your account. All you have to do is put the right people to work for you, and that's as simple as calling this number. You'll speak to a tax expert who can help you negotiate a settlement that's significantly less than the actual amount you owe. They saved my business. 
I owed $30,000 and paid a fraction of it. Call this number and get your case settled for less. Now, you only have a small window of time to settle, so act now. Welcome back to ESPNU College Football, presented by Allstate. Quite a game here in Durham, North Carolina. ACC action. Duke on top of Miami. 17-14. Doug Bell alongside Charles Arbuckle. Heck of a game, Buck. Uh, curious who's going to start as Miami takes over the third quarter. Will it be Marv reemerging, or will Ja'Cory Harris pick up where he left off? Well, the way Ja'Cory Harris finished, I would say go with him again. He has a hot hand. But with this whole thing, they continued to go with Marv. And early on, he looked pretty good. He did. We talked about him being marvelous at times. And this was an excellent job of getting out of the pocket, moving over, and getting rid of the football and getting it over to De Devon Johnson for six. But then the real key is Thaddeus Lewis does a good job of commanding that offense. And look at this play fake right here. Good job of hiding the football, going in for six. And then Ja'Cory Harris marched down the field in a minute and 15 seconds, finds his big tight end for six. Chris Zelda. So look at the numbers in the first half. Check out uh, the rushing yards for Duke, close to 100. That's what they really concentrated on in the off week, trying to improve that rushing game. And time of possession has been huge. That really has, and has correlated into points for him also, though. Joe Sergan kicks it away into that breeze. A little short now. Benjamin to the right side, and he goes nowhere. Once again, excellent coverage by Duke. Ravakumba on the stop. His special teams play has been very good for Duke. Just eight yards on the return. Now, Doug, it looks like he gets tripped up. This field was a little soggy when I went down earlier. It had some rain here yesterday quite a bit. And Miami guys are used to running on that fast turf. Looked like Travis Benjamin got tripped up just a little bit. So Ja'Cory Harris will stay in at quarterback. After leading Miami on that impressive touchdown, he's six out of seven for 47 yards and the touchdown. There's with time creating time intercepted. The freshman with a mistake. Adrian Ibarco, his second pick of the day, returns at 13 yards. Doug, he cocked and recocked his arm. And Ibarco just read it and stayed, came under flat and got that interception. Watch him move around here. He's going to scramble that way. And you know where he's going. He's looking at it. Cocks it on. And as soon as he does, Idarko breaks on the football. Travis Benjamin, he knows that he's looking for him that whole time. They've been so good about throwing that ball, and then he just put a little air on it. He got it over Idarko and to Travis Benjamin. So here comes Duke trying to take advantage. Once again in the red zone. Miami, one of the worst teams in the red zone, 110th in the country. That's Tony Jackson knocked out of bounds by Ryan Hill. Seven-yard pickup. I'll tell you who laid a hat. Tyler Robinson and Gerald Sharpton had a meeting in the backfield. 50 and 2. Watch here. Boom. Helmet flies off. You don't see it on that play, but good block inside. And Tony Jackson looks very good getting to the edges. Second down in three. They can get a first down before they score. Once again, Tony Jackson ends up at tailback. Looks like that'll go against Duke. There was some movement. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense number 67. Five yards in the previous spot. Remain second down. Mitchell Lederman, right guard. Take a look here. I mean, that helmet flies. You don't see it, but that's a good play inside. That's the last run. But Tyler Robinson and Gerald Sharpton have been meeting in the backfield. It hasn't been good. <laughs> Bruce now on second down. Looking into the end zone. It's a touchdown. Rafael Chestnut. Ten yards on the completion, and that was just picture perfect from the quarterback. Thaddeus Lewis did a good job of trying to direct traffic. And the person that he initially pointed to, he didn't throw to. 
He had Tyler Robinson deeper, and he pointed to him, and then he found Chestnut at the last second. You see two right there in the bottom of your screen. He initially told him to go one way, and that took the defender off of Chestnut. Six points. Maggio boots it through. Just like that, Miami had the momentum at the end of the first half, but Duke turns another turnover into a touchdown. It's Lewis to Chestnut. I can make you stronger. I can make you fit. I can make you ripped, powerful, shredded. Are you ready? You better be. Brian Stan, world champion mixed martial artist. Before he fought in a cage, he did two tours in Iraq with the U.S. Marine Corps and played football for Navy. Fitness has been my life. When I go into that cage, fitness is my only weapon. I've taken everything I've learned. The strength and speed of football, the discipline and commitment of the military, the controlled power of mixed martial arts, and distilled it all into one perfect fitness routine. And now he's making his personal workout system available to you for the first time. My techniques, my secrets. I will show you the perfect exercises for each muscle group and lay out the perfect workout schedule for the results you want. Together, we can unlock your body's potential. We can do this. Let's go. Call now to get Brian's All-American Body Shredding Interactive DVD. As a bonus, his personal workout regimen comes complete with the exclusive Pro Shredder. The Pro Shredder helps me power up my body with these super shredding exercises. Like this Russian twist that absolutely fires my obliques. Better yet, he will send you not one, but two Pro Shredders. With two Pro Shredders, I can turn a simple push-up into a super shredding push-up. And check out these chest flies. You get all this, the All-American Body Shredding Program, plus two pro shredders for just $29.95. Hey, I know times are tough, so I'm making sure you don't have to get ripped off to get ripped. And that's not all. Call now and Brian will also include his personal nutrition plan. My Max Muscle Nutritional Plan helps me cut weight when I need to without losing power. If after just one workout, if you don't agree that this is the ultimate body training system, send it back, no questions asked. Simple, affordable. Guaranteed effective or your money back. This is your moment. Pick up that phone. Make that call. Stop getting ripped off and start getting ripped. The University of Miami is on the move. We're revealing the mysteries of the world from the eye of the hurricane to the human genome. We're creating oceans of knowledge and helping to shape citizens of the world. We're making a difference right now in the classroom, the laboratory, and on our playing fields. So keep watching us. The University of Miami, it's all about the U. The Hurricanes now trail by 10. That's the defense. And now on the other side, Coach McIntyre getting his guys revved up just a two-play drive following that interception in Chestnut. Had the perfect pass from Thaddeus Lewis as you look at Travis Benjamin. Well, those are the things that are happening with Miami quarterbacks. In the moment play, I mean, they, the defense has changed on them. They're not doing the same thing. And those guys haven't had enough looks to know when to make the right decisions. Four returns for 92 yards for Benjamin, and they wanted to give him an opportunity. That fair catch there just caught. And then surging forward, that's Daryl Sharpton on the return for the Hurricanes, just a three-yard return. Let's look back now, one of the great players in Duke history, Cedric Jones, back late 70s, early 80s. And he could really leap, had some great hops, and then played with Steve Grogan and those great Patriots teams from 1982 to 1990. Lost in that Super Bowl to the Chicago Bears, their great team. In a moment, we'll talk to Cedric. It is homecoming weekend as he returns to the alma mater. To Corey Harris through that terrible interception in the opening play of the third quarter. Out to the ground it goes. That's Greg Cooper. Bust free. Boy, some high stepping. Cooper out of bounds at the 32. Vincent Ray ran him out of bounds, but that's a 37-yard gain. Well, the best thing you can do for a young guy is have him with the running game. Look, Ty Lee is blocked right there, and that's the key. If you get him blocked, 
Greg Cooper has a chance to spring it for a long game. Now, this, these are one of the 20 or so touches that he's going to have. And usually when he touches the football, good things happen. That's what they should have done on the last <laughs> drive before letting Ja'Cory Harris throw the football. Let him get comfortable again. Easy to say up here, though. Yeah. They know what they want to do, but just, just a little F line. There's Cooper. Young man from Memphis, Tennessee. Here's the reverse to Benjamin. He's going to throw that ball to Ja'Cory Harris. Harris got to hang on to that football. Has a and just flailing out there. Agabasi finally tackles it. That's a 17-yard pickup. Well, this is backyard football. Double yeah. reverse pass to the quarterback. You gotta love it when you get a chance to pitch it out to Greg Cooper. And now Travis Benjamin says, "Hey, I love catching your football, but let me throw you one, buddy." And Jacory Harris, you're right, has to put that football away. Big Agabasi might knock it out. <laughs> But look how quickly they strike. Even after a bad play on the last drive, Ja'Cory Harris coming back in and capitalizing on a big, long run by Greg Cooper. Harris, quarterback keeper, design play, and he's in for the touchdown. Quick strike offense, 15 yards. And the Hurricanes are within four. A different element to the game when he's in it, Doug. And it seems like guys are holding their blocks a little longer, doing a little bit more because they know he has that capability. Watch right here. Hold it right there. It's going to be a great block on the edge here, and that's going to spring. Watch right there. Just enough to take Vincent Ray out of the picture, and then the blocking outside by Darius Johnson. Two players can make a big difference in one play. Matt Bosher just got that past the oncoming defender. And once again, Ja'Cory Harris gets the block everything from Cooper. In, just a net. Yeah, just enough. Just enough. And everything inside was taken care of. That's three plays, 69 yards, just over a minute. Harris on the touchdown. And let's check in now with Abby Wainer, who has a special guest. I'm down here to set with Cedric Jones, not only one of the all-time football greats here at Duke, but also a father and an uncle of three current Duke football players. Cedric, first speaking as a Duke alumni, what has the season been like with the arrival of Coach Cutcliffe, Coach Cutcliffe and the, uh, the uh, rise of the Duke football program? Coach Cut is a, fr a breath of fresh air for the Duke program. He's energetic. He believes in his athletes. He's got them on a strict weight program. They've lost weight. They're playing fast. They're playing confident. I love what he's done. Just look at the stands. I mean, it's incredible to see all these people out here supporting Duke football. Well, now, speaking as a father and an uncle, for that matter, what's it like to see your two sons and your nephew suit up in the same uniform that you did? Well, there's no greater treat to see my nephew and my boys come out of that tunnel. And uh, the first time they did, I had tears in my eyes. It's just very emotional. Our brother played here. We're a big Duke family. And to see them get a chance to play in the same field that I did is, is tremendous. I'm, I'm all more nervous with them than I ever was for me playing. So I'm a nervous wreck when they're out there. But lastly, while I have you here, tell me about your involvement with the New York Athletic Club. I'm the athletic director there and oversee 20 sports. And for post-collegiate athletes who still want to play fencing or wrestling or judo, they come compete in my club. And we have 20, 41 athletes to go to China. 17 of them won medals this year. So it's a great opportunity for me, and I love amateur sports. Well, great. Thank you so much for being here today, Cedric. Thank you, Abby. All right, Abby, thank you. Great to see Cedric. Look at that smile, proud papa. Nice return by Jabari Marshall. So good field position for Duke, who now has to answer Miami's scoring drop. Oh, yeah, and Miami, you better do it because they are, when they've scored, they score very quickly. But that was a good return, giving you some positive yards and getting you out of your area. First half, Thad Lewis. So he's done so far this season. Actually, he's gotten better in the second half. There he goes in and talks to the coaches. There's just no underestimating the value of a David Cutcliffe and what he brings to the table for a quarterback. And it's he's a proven commodity. And the last two Super Bowl winners, he taught him how to be a quarterback, Peyton and Eli. Lewis. Has his big target. That's the big tight end, Brett Huffman. His second grab, 16 yards. Glenn Cook on the stop. And I like this, Doug, because Thaddeus Lewis is now answering his younger brother, Corey Harris, in a sense. They've grown up together. This is a great throw here. Puts it only where his receiver can get it. And big tight ends, turn around, show your body. All draped up by Sean Spence, but still able to come up with the catch. 
Once again, if you haven't seen Duke play, they get set as if they're going to snap that football, and then, oops, they look to the sidelines. The tempo on offense is so much better than I've seen in the last few years also better. Nice pass, timing move, Brandon Harris on the stop. On the receiving end was Rafael Chestnut, picks up seven. Here you look comparing Thad Lewis with the great Ben Bennett, the all-time leading passer in ACC history. And it's pretty close after 39 games, 29 games. He looks, got some great numbers there. And, you know, the other thing, Doug, is that he wasn't recruited by Miami as a quarterback. They wanted him as an athlete. So every time he plays Miami, he's going to give him his best. Ooh, Clifford Harris gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that is it. Adewale Ojimo was there, along with Antonio Dixon. You know, you look at those numbers, though, it's so funny because when they compare numbers, I, I know at Alabama, John Parker Wilson is now the all-time leading passer at Alabama. But back when Ben Bennett played and back when some of those great Alabama yeah. quarterbacks played, they just didn't throw they it didn't throw the same amount of times. Yeah, they ran more, and it was a different design of yeah. how offenses were as well. So the numbers are skewed as these young players now get the records. It looks like Miami jumped again. Antonio Dixon. Can you count them? Three times. That's <laughs> happened. <laughs> and then now they're trying to blame it on the Duke center. Now, the defensive lineman, the center may have moved. Now, that's this is why they're having this huddle. If he moved, it's a... It's a Marshall snap, false start, offense number 62. Five-yard penalty, remains third down. That's uh, Brian Morgan, the young man from Hoover, Alabama, played at Hoover High School. Remember two-a-days, they did the show on MTV? That's right there, watch it. Now, if he moves, moves... See how he moved oh, his head? He moved did his head. Yeah, he moved his head. And he's he's trying to snap the ball along with that. He is new. He's calling him out. You can't do that. Well, if you can get away with it, that's pretty effective. That's pretty tricky, though, center. He huh? moved, his, moved his wrist just enough, too. Lewis showed some strength. Flag down on the play. Looks like it'll be holding against Duke. At least it's in that area. Allen Bailey on the coverage. And now Miami trying to turn up the heat and the pressure just a little bit on Lewis and company. Yeah. Holding. Offense number 70. The penalties decline. Fourth down. Fred Rowland has struggled with big time players. Big 70 here. Whenever we've watched him now, he's going against a guy that's just a freak. Allen Bailey. He's used to hunt coons and possums and alligators. He just tackles them. Allen Bailey, as a sophomore, had a torn pec muscle. Is finally coming back to fruition. Doug, he's a man. 6'4", 285. <laughs> Coach Ron Middleton and I looked at him like, wow. I'm telling you. He said fried possum is the best thing you've ever eaten. Benjamin lined up back at the 10. Kevin Jones. Nice spiraling punt. It takes a big bounce, and they're going to down that at the two-yard line. What a beautiful punt. Chestnut got down there to pick it up. That's a 49-yard punt. Miami is trapped deep. Jack Link's Beef Jerky presents Messing with Sasquatch. This trail is awesome. Jack Link's Jerky, feed your wild side. Now, Indiana Jones is on DVD. You will find it. Always glad to help. The greatest adventure of all time. Go chopper, will you? Won't be complete. <laughs> until you bring home the latest chapter. Go faster! Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Complete your collection on DVD and Blu-ray today. You don't keep it to yourself. Just a few quick clicks and you found the directions you needed. Or that recipe you wanted. And now, just one click gets you everything you need to advance your career and increase your salary. Earn My Degree features hundreds of online degrees in business administration, education, nursing, and more. 
online degrees are fast, flexible, and convenient. Perfect for busy professionals like you. You can browse by subject, degree, or school, and Earn My Degree will help find the perfect online program for you. And with 24-7 online convenience, you can earn your degree whenever, wherever you like, in as little as 10 months. Earn My Degree even includes valuable career, education, and financial information. It's everything you need to move ahead online. We've done all the legwork for you, so all you have to do is click. Visit Earn My Degree today. Go to the web address on your screen right now. ESPNU College Football is brought to you by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. So look at the great Wallace Wade, the coach tier. Back in the 30s and 40s, Eddie Cameron actually led Duke to a Sugar Bowl victory over Alabama way back when. What a rich tradition Duke has in football. Having mentioned Steve Spurrier, he had some pretty good years here. Just a moment, we'll talk to the new athletic director here at Duke University as Landon Ja'Cory Harris, that time of possession still a large lead in Duke's favor. Harris in his own end zone has to throw it, almost intercepted. Oh, what a dangerous pass, but he would have been tackled for a safety. Tao Ilili almost came up with a pick. Akpaka Warwick almost had to tackle the end zone. Yeah, that pressure there was very good by Big 91 off the park. It comes off, and Tao Ilili almost has that for six. But the pressure there, Ja'Cory Harris felt that clock ticking in his head. Had to get rid of it. Second down and 10. Harris quickly gets it out and through the hands of Chris Zellner. Zellner caught that touchdown at the end of the first half. This is a tough area to be, Doug. And Zellner was shaking up on the kickoff return, so he's limping a little bit. Corey Harris is in a tough situation. Surprisingly, Miami didn't start on first down with the running play like I thought they would. When you're this far backed up with this crowd the way it is today, and you can see on third downs, 25%. Not very good for Miami. A week ago, they were two of 17 on third down conversions. You saw the Duke student section trying to put the hex on them. They go to Cooper on the ground. Picks up two, it'll bring up fourth down. Williams on the stop for Duke, Lynn Williams. That's where you have to be conservative. You have two plays, one where you almost went the other way, pick six. Second one, you have a drop. And then the third, you just have to manage that, get any yards you can, and then kick out of the end zone. Third punt of the day now for Matt Bosher. Remember his last punt, he shanked it off the side of his foot. Gets it out of there. Donovan Varner will feel that at midfield. Called for the fair catch. That's a 47-yard punt. Not a bad punt by Bosher, who, like the Miami squad, is hot and cold, sometimes spectacular, sometimes uh, not. Let's introduce Kevin White, uh, the man who's taken over. The athletics department here came from Notre Dame. Kevin, great to see you. Doug, great to see you. Thanks for having me. Charles, how are you? What an right. atmosphere today. It started out at the scrimmage, and Coach K got us fired up when he talked to the crowd. And, <laughs> and now you got a great football game, Kevin. This is good stuff. It's been a great day here at Duke, you know, with basketball and uh, and everything else that's going on. And, and of course, now a great football game. So there's, uh, there's an awful lot going on here. There's a completion on the outside. Rafael Chestnut, who's been the favorite receiver for Thad Lewis today. Talk a little bit about what David Cutcliffe has brought to the program because uh, just the entire uh, flavor of the campus has changed toward football. You know, David's a pro. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, he's, he's a well-seasoned head football coach, you guys, and he's done uh, a brilliant job bringing big-time football to Duke University, and he's done it so quickly and, and effortlessly, to be honest with you. He's, uh, he's a great leader, and uh, the, whole in, the whole environment here has been, been very inspired by David. As Thad looks to David at the sidelines and gets those signals, and you have two people calling those signals for Duke. One is the real McCoy, and the other one is the phantom signal. And play action, Fred Lewis. Runs into trouble, just throws it away. That's a smart play. 
And David Cutcliffe, uh, here's what he said about you, Kevin, earlier this week as we, uh, Charles and I had a chance to speak to him. He said, Kevin White, our AD, is a great addition. He's been down that road before at Notre Dame. Dr. Broadhead, our president, is committed. And that's not just verbiage. He wants us to be successful. No question about it. When the football program is strong, it, it just trickles down to every other program. You know what? We have 26 sports here, you guys, and they've all got the ability to be really strong. But uh, David's a great leader. We've already talked about that. Uh, Mike Krzyzewski, obviously, is as good a coach as there is in the country in any sport at any level, in my opinion. Uh, Joanne McCauley, our women's basketball coach, is really, really solid, very, very good, highly skilled. And I could go right across our entire coaching staff. This is a great place to be the athletics director. Ed Lewis now has it a bit. Had an open receiver and just threw it a little sooner than he wanted to. When you think about Duke and the football, what brought you to the decision to bring David Cutcliffe here? And what was your vision for the football? Uh, I tell you what, that was uh, President Dick Broadhead and Joe Oliva. Uh, my predecessor's decision, not mine. I, I came after the fact. And I'll tell you, David was a great hire. Not a good hire, a great hire. And I remember penning Joe Oliva a note from South Bend indicating, boy, you hit the jackpot. You, you hired a great football coach. What a nice man. And he's done wonders with your quarterback, Thad Lewis. Of course, that's kind of his M.O. Works with those quarterbacks. That's Peyton and Eli, and they'll tell you what a coach he is. Lewis now with time over the middle. And that will go. Oh, did he catch it? Looked like he tried to keep it alive with his feet, and no, it did fall incomplete. That was Eron Riley. Shot for one of those soccer kicks to keep it alive in the air. Not quite, but close. Yeah, he did a great job, though, of staying with it. This deep end route, you usually want him down and away, and that's where the ball is going. And right there, it looks like he kicks the ball up, and watch him reach out and catch it. Now, oh. the ball touched just when he was trying to bring it in. Good effort by Eron Riley. There it is. He got the fortuitous kick, and then it just touched the tip of the ball, touched the turf. So to bring up fourth down, and I think they're going to review this. I think when we look at it, Kevin, I think it's going to stay as called on the field. It's awfully close. I'm not objective. I'd, li I'd, like, to have, I'd like to have the ability to review it. Can I make the decision? <laughs> Well, there it is, and, and Kevin, as we're watching the replays, talk about uh, the future. I know a uh, indoor facility is in the works for the football. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of good things are in the works. Yeah, well, I, we've got a lot to do here, and uh, that, that, that shouldn't come as any surprise. You guys have been on a lot of campuses, and there's just a, a whole After lot to do here, but we've got so much support. Confirm. Our Incomplete president's pass. been great. We have a strategic Incomplete plan down. we've inherited. It's had great faculty, dean, VP, provost, and other participation, not to mention trustees. So, you know, we've got an awful lot of momentum right now. What's the energy in the community? Because that plays a big role as uh, well. It, it's enormous. And I, I think you can, you can kind of credit, you know, uh, you know Mike Krzyzewski and, and David Cutcliffe and, and Joanne McCauley and others for really keep getting this group in, inspired. I, our, our group wants to be at the highest level in all sports, and we are in a, in a number of them. But, you know, really the, the one that we struggled in is this one, football. And we got a chance with David, big time chance. Benjamin, a rare fair catch for the young man. So Miami will take over after the 26-yard punt at the 13-yard line. Kevin White. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me, you Thanks guys. Thank you. Carpet. All right, take care. Thank you. Kevin White, athletic director here at Duke. Blue Devils lead by three. The phone company has an important message for its customers. Don't listen to Vonage. Well, over two million people have already joined Vonage. Oh, really? With Vonage, you get award-winning service quality with unlimited local and long-distance calls for just $24.99 a month. Unlimited for just $24.99? Are you having trouble keeping track of what your phone company is charging? With Vonage, your rate starts low and stays low. Sign up now with Vonage and get one month free. Call 1-877-4-VONAGE or go online today. Own a timeshare? Turn it into cash. No more mortgage payments. Thank you, Timeshares Only. At Timeshares Only, you'll find properties from the biggest names in the industry. If you want to buy, sell, or rent, call now. Call Timeshares Only and get your free information kit with our insider secrets to buying, selling, and renting timeshares, plus receive a free $100 gift card. The over $5 billion sold in the past six months proves now can be the best time to sell. Call 800-366-5179. That's 800-366-5179. Starting Sunday, for three nights, you're going to get hooked. 
Monster fish. And the fish just took off ripping and just all hell broke loose. As big as a grizzly, as wild as a bull. It's about like getting hit with a bowling ball. It's three full nights of new reels, fresh bait, and even bigger battles. He gets to spin and oh. you can't hold him. Getting hooked never looked so good. Three nights of hooked start Sunday at 8 on Nat Geo, Channel 276. Four cars and two kids later, Kate still gets animated about her auto insurance with eSurance. I was a little too animated when I had a fender bender, but eSurance was there for me. eSurance hooked me up with a great body shop. They took care of me from start to finish. And through certified shops and eSurance's direct repair network, you can monitor repairs online 24-7. It's like watching your car come back to life. No wonder so many drivers are drawn to eSurance Auto Insurance. Welcome back to ESPNU College Football presented by Allstate. Duke on top of Miami 24-21. Doug Bell along with Charles Arbuckle, Abby Wayner, our campus connection reporter, star basketball player for the Blue Devils. Great defender also. Mm -hmm. Gotta remember that. She can play. Shakur Harris is going the distance now in the second half. Have not seen Robert Marv. He's tackled by Egbo. Both teams are struggling a bit. First time we've had back-to-back -back three and outs in the football game. More college football tonight right after our game. It's Arkansas, Kentucky, Southeastern Conference on the U. Then at 10 Eastern, it's Florida A&M against Southern. FAMU and the Jaguars all presented by City. ESPN prime time on the U. Third teams end up in that eye formation, getting the block from the fullback, and Greg Cooper goes nowhere. Let's join Lowe Galindo in the studio for a Sports Center U in game update. Well, guys, Penn State put together a crucial drive before the half. They were down to Michigan 17 to 7, but Daryl Clark gets it to Jordan Norwood. Penn State within three at the half. And also, Oklahoma within, they had a seven point lead against Kansas. They get more. Sam Bradford, Jermaine Gresham, 31 17, OU in the third. Jermaine Gresham was a big time player, Doug. Mm. <laughs> oh, man. Oklahoma with that longest active home winning streak, as you heard Lowell talk about those highlights. Ooh, Jagori Harris gets sacked by Vincent Ray. A negative seven for the Hurricanes. What about Dave McIntyre, Coach McIntyre? What did he tell us about coming with the blitz? They came with the Javar James did a good job initially, a pickup. Watch five. Good pickup right there. But Oba got, you got so many guys inside coming after him. Ogabasi right there. And also Vincent Ray picking up that sack. Bosher sends Varner running backwards. What a nice bounce. This is good. Oh, Varner decides to field it. Gets some of that yardage back. And he called for the fair catch, obviously. Changes mind. Yeah. <laughs> he said, well, I ain't got a chance. That is a 77 wow. yard punt for Matt Bosher. That helps the average. Man, that does. And we talked about the wind dying down and then picking back up. And there will be a penalty, too, because you can't call for the fair catch That'd and then nice. return it. Unless you muff the ball mm -hmm. and then other people After come. the play, following a valid fair catch signal, the runner advanced the ball. By rule, that is a delay of game on the receiving team. Five yard penalty. It will be first down. That, that really makes it an 82 yard punt. I mean, watch this kick. Imagine if you're a punt returner. I tell everybody, this is a hard position to play. Yeah, second thoughts. Okay, let me go with it. <laughs> Sam Shields is like, hey, you can't do that. <laughs> you cannot do that. There is a stiff breeze at the back of Miami. It has been there the entire game. Lewis now trying to get something going, and he gets stopped by Big Joe Joseph. Double J. Miami has gone two straight three and outs, and now the Miami defense trying to force Duke into another three and out. You know, you just wonder, where does Miami find all these athletes? I mean, Calais Campbell is most recently, and you think of Warren Sapp, and all, I mean, they always have very good defensive linemen. Lewis came up hobbling just a bit. 
After that last tackle by Joe Joseph. Back to the ground to the outside. Cutting it back is Tony Jackson. Nine-yard pickup. Go back to the bread and butter of your offense behind Cameron Goldberg and Kyle Hill on the left side, left guard, left tackle, and then Austin Kelly with a good block, 83 on the outside. Tony Jackson shows a little bit more burst when he's in the ball game. They can get to the edge with him, and if they block it, he has a chance. Third down and four. Four out of 11 today in third down conversions. You gotta beat Miami here, because usually they go cover two man under. Two deep safeties and everybody's covering. Duke clinging to a three-point lead. Had his man incomplete. That's the perfect call right there, Doug, because Tony Jackson is in that one-on-one -on -one coverage with Sean Spence. It's all man underneath, and you beat that with crossing routes or running away. Tony Jackson just couldn't quite come up with that. It looks like Coach Cutcliffe is asking, could you see the ball? Because it looks like he just never tracked it. Now Kevin Jones, second-year player from Austin, Texas, will kick into that breeze. Miami should have good field position. And it's a pretty good climb. Benjamin goes back to the 40. A lot of room. A lot of blue jerseys, but somehow Rook is out of trouble, and he's going to go all the way, but Clouds are down back at the 45. That's going to be a block in the back or a clip. That's the most exciting non-play you're going to see. <laughs> 60 yards on the return. You call those guys walk-in closet kind of guys. You put them in a five-by-five -five space with 11 people, and they still get out. It's going to come back, but that was exciting. Illegal block in the back. Number 51 in the receiving team. 10-yard penalty to the foul. First down. Oh, watch this. Stop it right there. One, two, three, four, five guys. He had only five in that closet. And now watch this. Ooh. The block in the back is going to come. So the, everybody pauses and he just takes off. That was Brian Morgan who came in and delivered that block. And here's Brian talking <laughs> to his coach. He was close to probably being out of bounds as well. But that was still a, a great non-play. That actually freed up Benjamin. Without the yeah. block in the back, oh, yeah. he probably would have been pushed out of bounds. So just a hustle play by Davis as you look at Travis Benjamin. True freshman from Bell Glade, Florida, who you will be hearing so much about in years to come. What a dynamic talent. Robert Marr has not played in the second half. Greg Cooper finds a hole, puts his head down, breaks the tackle, and still going. Solid run. 15 yards and the tackle by Vincent Ray. I'm just impressed with Greg Cooper every time I watch him. What he does, what he brings to this Miami offense. You know, you, you need you need blocks from outside. He's going to come in and, and try a block. But Craig Cooper comes and breaks out there. I'm going to give Travis Benjamin a little love. It wasn't a great block, but it was just enough. Watch right there. Boom. <laughs> it was a, I'm going to get in the way, I don't know. But it was just enough to spring Greg Cooper. Oh, boy, Harris with his best pass of the day. That's beautiful. That goes to Kane Farkasson, Glenn Williams on the stop, 22 yards. Kane Farkasson was found in a church youth league. I mean, he was one of those guys that just, they saw him playing, he went to junior college, and the rest is, now he's at Miami. <laughs> that was a pretty pass. Now, that showed me something, that pass. On the move, threaded that needle. Harris getting a lot of confidence right now. He's got a little swagger about him. And he's got the running game going with him. And that's Cooper going forward. How Ely Ely comes up with a stop. Javari Marshall was also there. And there goes Cooper to the sidelines. Well, you, now you have Javaris James back so you can get Cooper some breaks. He's not the power back inside, but he's stronger this year and running better. They don't want to wear him out. They said last year, the first five games, he was lights out. But he got tired later in the year. And this year, they want to get different guys in to make sure they keep him fresh for that stretch drive. Harris steps up in that pocket into the corner of the end zone. Had a man overshot and flagged down. That's Farkasson again. Glenn Williams on that coverage. And he may get called for a hole. And, Doug, they, they worked on this in practice. 
and the coaching staff was saying, hey, what is Miami going to run down here? They're going to run corner routes. So the, you see the safety there has to get over. Holding defense number 24 against an eligible receiver. 10 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. But Glenn Williams also has to be better in his coverage. Now, he locked him up, and that's why they call it. Donovan Varner has to be over more. Because you know that corner route's coming, and if you're the center, feel safety, you've got to be over to help protect that. Because the man underneath is already going to get beat off the line. He's relying on you to be back deep. First and goal now from the nine-yard line. Harris with a handoff. I thought he was going to fake it, but he handed that ball off to Devon Johnson. Held it out there for a long yeah, I sure time. Did. <laughs> and I think he was even getting a little nervous. It, it looked like they wanted that to come the other way, but watch how long he held. 1,001, 1,002, he's like, hurry up. And then Devon Johnson makes four or five people miss. It was almost like Devon <laughs> didn't have the right play. <laughs> like he was out there thinking, I don't think I'm in on this one. <laughs> Some of the youthfulness of the Hurricane offense. Javaris James in their tailback. Harris, jump ball. And here's the signal, touchdown Miami. Oh, there he is, Johnson. Leaped up and caught it, waiting for the signal. And it's a touchdown, Miami back in the lead. Doug, you can tell they've played together quite a bit. And those are the kind of plays when Aldarius Johnson and Ja'Cory Harris just go out and make plays together. It's a fade route. Perfectly thrown football where only his guy can come up with it, and he does for six. They were high school teammates on that great team at Northwestern High. And now the extra point would give Miami a four-point lead. And it's good. Pat Nix down there likes what he sees in this offense tonight. The offensive line did a good job also, too, of protecting. Glenn Williams in good coverage, but just a good throw. There's Pat Nix, second year offensive coordinator, 36 years old. His team on top as we check in with Low Glendo, Sports Center UN game update. Kansas Jayhawks making it very, very close to Norman, Oklahoma. OU with a 14 point lead, but Jake Sharp cuts into that right now, 24 31 in the third. Don't count out those Jayhawks. They got a running game now. <laughs> Sharp had had two 100-yard games coming in, and now he's helping them play again. And this guy here, you talk about helping them play, Ja'Cory Harris, Doug, what about him? Well, he might have won the job. Uh, I mean, Robert Marv was ineffective, and he just might have won this job. And you know what they are in the red zone? 4-4. Four, four. That's 100 percent it. All touchdowns, too. Boy, you Ja'Cory <laughs> has that uh, Mohawk look going. Look at these Miami fans. It, it, hey, it's, it's getting chilly. It's not like that down in <laughs> sunny Coral Gables. This is a good ball game. And, and Randy Shannon said it best. He said, every time we play Duke, it's like they have a bullseye on us. <laughs> now, this is a different Duke team, though. They are well conditioned, shaped, so they're going to play all the way through the fourth quarter. No more running out of gas. They'll start from the 20-yard line. And Miami has also had a problem finishing. Let's check in with Abby Weiner, a Campus Connection reporter. Of course, Abby, a great basketball player at Duke, and she's doing a great job for us on the sidelines. Abby? Thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, well, a little bit earlier during the game, the Duke fans booed when they saw the USC score come up on the scoreboard, mistaking the S for an N. And they also uh, repeated their boos a little bit later when the actual UNC score came up on the scoreboard. While the rivalry is normally reserved for the men's basketball teams, Make no mistake, I don't believe these two teams will be skipping and holding hands when they meet a little bit later in the season. You're right about that. Lewis has a whoa, wide open receiver. And Riley lets another one fall to the turf. That's a couple he's dropped today, Buck. That's another time where he just took his eyes off the football. Sometimes when you miss that first pass or you, you miss one early, you struggle. And he's, he's really struggling today, Doug. Ball's going to hit him right in the chest. And watch at the last second. He takes his eyes, getting ready to run up the field. Got to catch it first. And you know, Thaddeus Lewis is not going to go away from him, but I think the key thing is making sure that he gets him an easier throw so he can run with it after the catch and get back comfortable. Second and 10. Abby mentioned the UNC Virginia game, and the Tar Heels do lead that one 7 to 3 with five minutes remaining. 
in that contest in Charlottesville. Oh, breaking a tackle, keeping those legs pumping is Tony Jackson. Boy, I like this kid. Flag down back at the 25. Reddick ran him out of bounds. It was a late flag, 34 yards on the pickup. Tyler Robinson had a great block. I see the call. I think it's going to go back. Blocking below the waist, number 15, offense. Half the distance from the previous spot. Remains second down. Uh, Eron Riley is compounding penalties. Penalty and on top of that, let's see this great block right inside. Eron Riley with the block below the waist. Not in the picture there, but a but a huge penalty because this was a good run. Look at Tyler Robinson, too, with a good block and then a very strong run by Tony Jackson. All going back because of Eron Riley's mistake. Second down and 20. Following the penalty. Lewis with time over the middle. And Riley can't hold on to another one because he has that bad thumb. This, this is a situation where if you're Coach Cutcliffe, pull him off for a play, talk to him, let him calm down, get him out of the game. That's what get he's going to do. Game. You yeah. get him out of the game and just let him get his head together, get into him and say, hey, look, we need you. Because he, he's not he's not in the flow of it now. And, and you know he's going to come back. He has to come back and make plays for you, but just get him to think about it, get his head together, get back into it. Third down and 20 against a stiff breeze. Here comes the blitz. And he goes down. As Ojimo coming from the outside. It's too tough to defend. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Cameron Goldberg was in a no-win situation. Ojimo is buddy, Daddy is Lewis's buddy from way back, right there. He's just gonna come and beat that guy there and get to the point before Thaddeus Lewis gets there. Watch how fast he gets. Beats him. Nice move with the hands, and Thaddeus Lewis on the fifth step. Ojimo is there before he gets it. Watch, as soon as he steps, he doesn't even know he's there. He knows in his head that he's coming, but he should have a little bit more time. Jones just a yard in front of that out-of-bounds strike. Gets it away. No pressure from Miami. Benjamin with a breeze behind him. Doesn't need a lot of help. Cuts back. Goes forward. Look out for Benjamin. Boy, he is so dangerous, and he puts Miami in excellent position. Adam Banks finally brought him down. 43 on the punt, 19 on the return. Hey, Doug, they talk about Swampland down in Miami, but I'm from down south, the other south. That's Bayou ability. Watch this. Now, the kick is going to be there. And Travis Benjamin always kind of just calms you down and goes by you. And look, <laughs> he's still running it. If he makes one more man miss, he may be to the house. Golly. We've seen some young <laughs> freshmen this year, but yeah. he's one of the most exciting. Best field position for the Hurricanes now. First and 10 from the 28. Harris over the middle. Oh, and a wide open. Diedrich Epps and just overthrew him. Allstate presents Burgwood on location. And today, we look at Miami. They lead this series 4-1. Duke won the first meeting, 1976. Went back just a few weeks before Jimmy Carter was elected president. Gas was 67 cents back in 76. Last two meetings decided by 10 points or less. Remember, tailgate with Burgwood at Burgwood. Not net. Blitz picked up well by Miami. Gave Ja'Core Harris just enough. And that's what J Javaris James brings to the, to the mix. Cousin of Edron James does a very good job. Every time you see Duke creeping up to bring the blitz, he's been very good in pass pro. Duke now having to bring people. Mike McIntyre and Marion Hobby. Marion Hobby, I played against when he was at New England. Played on that great, on those teams with New England. When Andre Tipple was there, he was a defensive lineman. He's bringing a whole new attitude to this defensive line. They need to make a play here to stop Ja'Cory Harris if they want to get that ball back and not allow Miami to continue this drive. One out of six on third downs. Harris goes for it all. Benjamin is wide open. Touchdown, Miami. That is beautiful. The offense has 
come alive here in Durham, North Carolina. 25 yard strike. You said I was saying, the same thing that makes you laugh makes you cry. <laughs> Boy, this speed for Miami. One minute you laugh and the other minute you're crying if they're coming at you. And boy, Travis Benjamin and Ja'Cory Harris. These are the kind of things you expect. Young guys sometimes make you want to pull your hair out, but then they also want to make you love the things that they do. And that was an excellent job by both of those young freshmen. And now Miami has a 35-24 lead. Harris, show me something now, Buck. He is. Getting comfortable, getting in the rhythm, knows he's not coming out of the game, does. That makes a difference for you. Three plays, 28 yards. Let's join Lowe Glendo now in the studio for a Sports Center U in-game update. So Ole Miss is the first team to score against Bama in the first quarter, first team to lead, and they're trying to become the first team to beat Bama. Jevin Sneed, Shea Hodge, Bama still with the seven-point lead in the fourth. Look out for the Rebs, uh, Houston Nutt. Uh, his, you know, when you, he's beaten five number one teams. Our top five teams uh, since his time at Arkansas, so this is not a shocker. Jevin Sneed, formerly at University of Texas, left when Colt McCoy won that job. Very good player. We saw him earlier on tape versus Wake Forest. I like the kid. I thought that was the one difference maker with Alabama's secondary. How would they hold up? You know their defensive line is great, but he can really throw that football. So Boschel booted away from Miami. All five touchdown drives have been under two minutes and three seconds. And we need to talk about this offense coming alive. Five touchdowns when you add it all up. Five of their touchdowns have come in six minutes and five seconds. Wow. That's, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's some quick strike ability there, Doug. And that's what they've been looking for for this offense to kind of wake up. Jabari Marshall is deep. And again, the wind is behind the back of the kicker. And so he'll go down on a move. And it's been three straight three and outs for Duke as they start on the 20 yard line. And they'd like to get that wind at their back because yeah. Miami with the wind at their back, big difference. You need your big player to come up and make plays. Elon Riley has to step up for him as well. Hey, don't forget hockey tomorrow, 5 Eastern on the U. And this is a good one Boston U against New Hampshire. Remember the uh, Miracle on Ice? All those guys were Boston U Terriers. And ESPNU.com, your gateway to all college sports content from ESPN, podcasts, video highlights, you name it. Duke will run a play and let this time tick away and then take start a new in the fourth quarter with a pretty stiff breeze at their back. Hey, Doug, Miami's playing with a whole different confidence level on offense and defense now. So David Cutcliffe will let this time tick down. There's no hurry to snap this. I mean, this is a difference-making Breeze. Yeah. We saw it with a 77-yard punt by Basha, which really, really turned the game around. It really did. And then also, too, Elon Riley with the miss and then the penalty. They were going well on that drive. So here comes Miami. This is more like it. A team that has struggled mightily has come roaring back, and they lead 35-24. Missouri takes on Texas A&M Sunday at 2.30 only on ESPNU. Prepare to defeat dry skin with new Gillette Dry Skin Hydrator and Body Wash. A deep cleanser with three times the hydrators. You'll step out of the shower feeling like you could take on the world. New Gillette Body Wash. Unleash the power of your shower. Uh, ground control. We have a problem. Switching to lithium power. I feel better already. Energizer Ultimate Lithium, the world's longest lasting AA battery and high tech devices. Energizer, keep going. Air Hogs. Send in the Havoc. Havoc is on the way. Introducing Havoc Heli from Air Hogs, the world's smallest remote controlled helicopter. Cutting edge micro size technology makes Havoc Heli so easy to fly. With twin rotors and four way precision control, you can fly Havoc in any direction with ultimate accuracy. Havoc maneuvers under, over, even through the toughest obstacles. From the tightest corners to the sharpest turns. Fly Havoc where no other heli can go. Holder of the world record for the smallest RC heli. Micro-sized Havoc delivers maximum power. You can fly to heights of 100 feet with the touch of a button. And our advanced LiPo battery technology gives you 10 minutes of flight time on a single charge. That's double the flight time of other RCs. 
Made from the latest in flexible high-impact composite, the Air Hogs Havoc is 100% safe and the toughest micro helicopter available. With three RC frequencies, you can fly up to three Havoc helis at the same time and race with your friends. Then take your skills to the next level and use the bonus hook attachment for top secret rescue missions. Havoc Heli also comes with a flashing LED light for accurate nighttime flying and a special Air Hogs landing pad for precision landings. The Air Hogs Havoc Heli is the ultimate in indoor flying. Similar RC copters can cost hundreds of dollars. Now with Air Hogs, you can get the Havoc Heli complete with lithium polymer battery for double the flight time. Four-way precision controller with built-in charger. Rescue attachment with two Air Hogs Elite Force figures and Air Hogs landing pad. With your order, we'll also include our Havoc CD-ROM featuring sneak peeks of Verhog's technologies now in development and more. You can get all this, the world's smallest and most advanced micro helicopter for two payments of $19.95. Must be 18 years or older to call. Here's how you can order. To order your Havoc Heli by Air Hogs, you can call 1-800-668-4054. That's 1-800-668-4054. The Havoc Heli by Air Hogs has two payments of $19.95 plus $9.99 shipping and handling. You must be 18 or older to order. You can call 1-800-668-4054. One quarter to play in Durham, North Carolina. Homecoming weekend here at Duke at the Blue-White Scrimmage at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Earlier today, Coach K spoke to the sellout crowd. Close to 9,000 watched the Blue and the White divide up teams. We were among them, Buck. That was terrific. Football team came marching through. And for a while, boy, they carried that momentum into this game, and now they hope to regain some of the big mo with Mother Nature huffing and puffing at the back of Thad Lewis. Picking up the blitz. At least half the blitz. They were coming from all directions. And that'll bring up third down. Now Miami's defensive front knows that they, they can respect the run only so much because Duke is going to be looking to pass the football and they were really ran and ready to go. This is the area where Randy Shannon and Bill Young both talked about finishing ball games. David Cutcliffe. Looks a little worried on the sidelines. Miami Speed has just turned this thing around in a big way as the Hurricanes look to snap a six game ACC losing skid. Lewis has his man. That's stolen away. Nope, incomplete. Austin Kelly on the receiving end apparently came up with it and then dropped it. And he is injured on the turf. It came down hard on his knee. Thaddeus Lewis trying to find somebody to make a play for him. His good defense right there knocks it out. Chavez Grant. And I think he hurt his knee going down. But the ball comes out before he hits the ground. Good play by Chavez Grant, but his knee just gets all buckled under. And they can ill afford to lose any more receivers. Eron Riley struggling already with his thumb. Hadn't quite been able to play. Austin Kelly really got that leg caught into this natural grass field. Ooh, yeah. ooh, that right knee really bent underneath the pressure. Your body's not designed to do certain things. Hopefully he's okay. David Cutcliffe spent some time with him yesterday. And we love going inside the coach's office to check out all the pictures and memorabilia. What a beautiful mahogany desk. Dawn of a new day. That was right above the desk. There's the first victory against James Madison. And then on the shelf, all sorts of memorabilia. Terrific picture after that win. And then the autographed pictures of Peyton and Eli Manning. Wallace Wade bust in the coach's office. Short punt can see the win behind him. And once again, Miami will have excellent field position. 44-yard punt. Five on the return. Right now, Miami with an 11 point lead. Done your research. We went on cars.com, we compared models side by side, and I didn't have to resort to plan B. Oh, what's plan B? I was going to have you eat these brownies. 
which I mixed with a horse laxative. Excuse me. My husband kind of has a sweet tooth. I'm taking it to the max. I am taking it to the max. The solid max. The max? I'm already there. Take your car to the max with quality Conoco gasoline. It's specially formulated to help clean fuel injectors in just five tanks to help reduce emissions and maximize mileage. I'm taking it to the max. I'm taking it to the max. Help maximize your mileage with Conoco. Take it to the max. So here we are in the fourth quarter. No time left and the touchdown is under review. Hey guys, what do you think? We're not ready to go yet. Is there any way you can send this thing into overtime? Yeah. No problem. I don't know what he was looking at, but we're going into overtime. Buffalo Wild Wings, you have to be here. This could finally end it. Oh, my. Red, black. When you want to get away. Both. Enterprise will pick you up and get you going to romantic weekends. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Stop. Harmful viruses and spyware that slow your computer down. Stop. Annoying pop-ups that constantly interrupt you online. Stop. Spending hundreds of dollars on computer repairs. Go to StopSign.com now to protect your computer against viruses and spyware. Buy StopSign now. Your membership includes all U.S.-based technical support. Go to StopSign.com now and keep your computer running fast and virus-free. StopSign. It's all the computer protection you'll ever need. Go to StopSign.com. Be whoever you want to be at ESPNU with friends. Friends are cool. And college sports. Sports are cool. Reach for the stars, cause you just might get Saving the future. And the alumni cheerleaders coming back on homecoming weekend, and they have not lost a step, Buck, even in blue jeans. Look at those cheerleaders. It's like riding a bike, you never forget, huh? <laughs> Still mixing it up. <laughs> That's good stuff, having some fun. And now Duke may have found a new quarterback. To imagine that Robert Marv would start next week after this performance by Ja'Cory Harris, who's 9 of 14 for 101 yards and two touchdowns. He threw that uh, costly interception at the beginning of the third quarter, and there's a busted play. You see a lot of that in Miami, but he turns a bad play. Wow. A decent play, although he takes a good pop from Catron Ganey. Eight-yard pickup. You know, we told you about David Cutcliffe. We showed you the coach's crib, and the one thing we forgot to show you that's Emily Cutcliffe, his young daughter. She's seven years old, and after school she comes, and she has her own nameplate. <laughs> and as he told us yesterday, he said, hey, she has a better angle at the field than I do. But he, uh, he is a family man, loves talking, so proud of his family, his wife, and two daughters, and, and two sons. What a story that is. There's a nice completion. Pitzer ran the tackle. Let's find out more about the Cutcliffe clan from the new member of our team, Abby Weiner. Well, Coach Cutcliffe is not the only member of his family seeing some football action today. His two sons are both managers for the Tennessee football team. Chris Cutcliffe, his biological son, and Marcus Hilliard, his everything but biological son. Chris and Marcus, now seniors and roommates at Tennessee, were best friends in elementary school, and then they became brothers in high school when Marcus's mother passed away. Coach Cutcliffe, his wife Karen, Chris, Emily, and Katie already considered Marcus a brother and a son in their family, and he has been nothing less since. Marcus held an internship at the Duke football program this past summer. He says that someday he wants to be a head football coach, just like his dad. Great stuff, Abby, and what a great story. 13 yards now, another first down for Miami, and uh, that story, well documented years ago, but now that they're both in Tennessee, they're roommates together. Well, it, and it brings you back to how many times we've talked to coaches over the whole year. Bobby Bowden said it best about how I know I've helped players' lives, but how directly David Cutcliffe has impacted Marcus Hilliard. I read that story last week. Again, I had read it before, but it just brought home so many good things about what he's done and what his family has done. David has deep roots at the University of Tennessee. 
was a part of that undefeated season. And T. Martin was the quarterback 10 years ago. So is that going to be another completion? Yes, it is. That's Aldarius Johnson for nine yards. Jamari Marshall on the coverage. He is very comfortable with Johnson. Also, David Cutcliffe, you know what area or what county he recruited when he was going down to Florida? Dade. So he knows all these talented individuals indirectly by watching players like Randy Shannon a long time ago. Look at the numbers now in the second half. The Hurricanes have come alive. 157 total yards in the first half, 167 in the third quarter. Looking for another touchdown to Aldarius Johnson, and that goes incomplete. Again, these guys are high school teammates. Lee Butler on the coverage. He got twisted around, but hung in there. But Doug, he said, hey, Charlie, we cannot play man for man physically with Miami. So we have to do things, and you're starting to see that now. Even these young players are just physically very well prepared to play this game. And now that they're getting comfortable and Ja'Cory Harris has settled in, it's a different Miami ball club. Third down and one, Harris. That's incomplete. Had Deering Epps. Kind of bobbled it. Yeah. Good play by Vincent Ray. Linebacker. Looked like he was right there. Big 31. You see him knocking the ball away. And Miami's going to go for it. Same thing that Duke did in the first half, Doug. We saw a lot of that, you remember? Miami is one for one today on fourth down. The option that you have, excuse me, is that Ja'Cory Harris can be a runner or you can go with the running back, Greg Cooper. Harris has the tight end. Looks like Epps again. Got wrestled out by Katron Ganey. Boy, he's a load yeah. for Diedrich Epps. Think about that guy. You know, you look at 18 right there. When he sees the blitz, he goes into the vacated area, turns around, Gets it for a first down. These are guys out of Richmond, Virginia, the junior. Had 11 catches coming into today's ball game. Miami has always been known to use their tight ends. Patrick Nix being a former quarterback, you, you got to figure. He wants to throw the ball to the tight end as well. Looking at the blitz. There's the time. In and out of the hands of Jones. Check that LaRon Bird. Uh, the biggest adjustment that I see for Miami is that they picked up the blitz very, very well in the second half. They made adjustments, and Patrick Nix and his staff, they've done a good job. Duke has tried to come with pressure, and every time they've done that, they've been hit with plays that Miami has been able to make in those vacated areas where they're trying to overload and blitz. There's Patrick Nix animated on the sidelines trying to get <laughs> Jermaine McKenzie in the right spot. Ninth play of this drive. Uh-oh, that's going to be a flag. Duke jumped the gun on that one. And that was Vincent Ray who was on the blitz, and he just, just didn't time it right. Let's join Lowe Galindo in the studio for Sports in a U in-game update. Overtime between Virginia and North Carolina. This is how we got there. 50 seconds left. Cedric Pierman with the touchdown run for the Cavs. Tied at 10. Overtime coming up right now. I bet you that place is rocking. We were there a few weeks back when Miami, I mean, when Virginia came on the scene. Virginia last 13 home games against the Tar Heels. Pretty successful. They're calling Virginia Georgia Tech next week. Georgia Tech has already disposed of Clemson today at Death Valley. Here's the reverse. Going nowhere. You know, Patrick Nix, I've known a long time. I knew him when he was a quarterback at Auburn, and I, you know, as we've talked to him the last two weeks, Charles, I detect the level of frustration he's going oh, through, yeah. and he's taking a lot of heat from a lot of angles. And the coaching staff and their coaching meeting this week, they got together and they told him, listen, sometimes you got to take chances. Sometimes you got to roll the dice and let these kids make plays. And I, I think he listened. Yeah, I think he did too. And, and he told us, you know, he said, I got a one-year-old daughter, and she's learning how to walk, and she's kind of scared. And, you just kind of let her out there, don't hold her, and she falls. That's okay. I thought it was an interesting conversation, and we're seeing it tonight. I think we're seeing this maturation process of a young offense. It's another touchdown. Yes. Miami is pouring it on. That's LaRon Bird. Kept it alive and came down with it. 
Lee Butler gets burned again. You don't want to awaken the sleeping giant. And it seems like we've seen that. LaRon Bird got away with a push. But Ja'Cory Harris has come out right there. He has playmakers. These are all, and I'm, I'm saying, Aldarius Johnson, true freshman. LaRon Bird, a true freshman. Travis Benjamin, a true freshman. There are freshmen galore on this team along with Ja'Cory Harris. They're going to review this play. But I tell you what, if you're in the ACC and you see these guys coming, youth or not, you better be prepared to play them. Does a great job of keeping, maintaining his balance, has his feet down, unless the ball is bobbling, which I don't see no. from that. It's a catch. Yeah, it's in it. his right hand. It's yep. tucked. It's a catch. This is a true freshman, 6'4", 210, out of Louisiana. And that was, I mean, Butler was on it. He played it as about as well as you can play it. He tried to knock it out. You see, does the only thing he can do, has a guy with height on him. But LaRon Bird <laughs> just pulls it in for six. That's not the fourth time we've seen Butler get turned around with yeah. his back to the quarterback. That's that's never a good thing. Again, he's a true freshman. Yeah. He's learning. And they want to see. He, he's going to be a good player, and this is a good test for him to go against some, some big-time receivers in high school, mind you, but who have come on and who we've known all, all along could be good players. But to your point, you let Ja'Cory Harris. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Puts out. You let Ja'Cory Harris get in there and play some with these guys, and they are looking very comfortable, Doug. Been pretty impressive in this second half. You know, it opened up the first play in the third quarter, interception by Harris, and he said, uh-oh. Since then, he's been flawless. Yeah. And that one drive with it. If Duke had opportunities, Tony Jackson had some plays, and they all come back. And ever since then, Miami has just been on a roll. Ja'Cory Harris is the star. Laron Bird. Yep, remember that name. All his kids are in their first year at Miami. I don't know. Maybe you should have been the blonde. Maybe you should just listen to the game. Maybe if you shaved your legs like me, the sneak in would have worked. Maybe if you hadn't lost our season tickets in a lawsuit because you got cheapo insurance, we'd be inside the stadium watching the game dressed like men. I don't want to get into this she said, she said thing. Getting cut rate insurance to save a little money could end up costing a lot. Call an Allstate agent today for a free good hands coverage checkup. Are you in good hands? It's time someone gave homeowners the tools to do more with less. It's time guaranteed low prices got even lower. At the Home Depot, we've lowered prices on over a thousand items throughout the store. From tools to ceiling fans, light bulbs to bare and glidden paint, everyday items to special projects and more. Some of our biggest reductions ever to help protect your biggest investment. At the Home Depot, you can do it, we can help. Can the unstoppable be stopped? Kelly Pavlik, an unstoppable runaway train, crushing anyone in his path. Pavlik has a huge knockout. Bernard Hopkins, the iron-willed warrior who's never been knocked out. Perfect right hand by Hopkins. Can the undeterred legend derail the Pavlik Express? This is boxing. Pavlik versus Hopkins. Saturday, October 18th. Live on DirecTV Pay-Per-View Channel 123. This is a photo of our first lumber liquidator store. We didn't have a fancy showroom or an expensive location. Our goal was simple, to provide great hardwood flooring at the best prices anywhere. Today, as the largest direct retailer of hardwood flooring, we're still not fancy, we're still a bit out of the way, but we continue to have the best hardwood flooring at unbeatable prices. Solid oak flooring as low as 99 cents a square foot. Bellawood pre-finished solid hardwood flooring from $2.99 a square foot. Visit your local lumber liquidators or lumberliquidators.com. ESPNU College Football is presented by Allstate. Proud sponsor, college football in the 75th Allstate Sugar Bowl. Are you in good hands? Impressive show by the U here in the second half. 42-24. The recruiting last year was very impressive. And Tom Luganville, our ESPN recruiting guru, tells me that uh, they're in line for another stellar recruiting class. <laughs> And not only that, you just think about how well Miami has finished the ball game. Look at that. Duke led. 
the third quarter, 24-14. Since then, I have 28 points. Unanswered points, that is. Short kick. Uh-oh. That's going to be a turnover. Who's going to get it? Miami's going to get it. They went right back to the same area. I think it was McIntyre that tried to come up with the catch. Yeah, that's the kid, uh, Ryan McFadden, McFadden who's the lacrosse player. First time he's ever played football in his life. And he's a big kid, about 6'4", 250, a defenseman in the lacrosse team. He called for that fair catch in the first half. It was all smiles. Hey, this is fun. It's they not fun right, right now. Yeah, they went back at him. And that hurts you. He missed that one, so Miami will take over again following the turnover. This was such a competitive game in the third quarter, and Miami has uh, just taken the ball and run away, and Duke is no longer involved in this game. Ja'Cory Harris took over in the second quarter for Robert Marv, who was ineffective. And he has been spectacular. Here's Benjamin. Coming up later tonight on ESPNU, SEC action. It's Arkansas against Kentucky in Lexington. Boy, the Wildcats need to win in the worst sort of way. And then FAMU against the Jags. That's the Southern Conference primetime presented by City on ESPNU, presented in crystal clear, high definition. All right, Buck, what do you think of this kid? 6'4", 185. I like what I see. I, they talk about being a good leader. She throws the ball well. Benjamin now they line him up on the opposite side, and he cut back across at 16 yards. Gainey a tackle for Duke. He has so many weapons that he can throw to, Doug. And when he takes his time, you know, the ball is getting there, and he just lets his playmakers make plays. Looks like the offensive lineman are with, with a different pace to him. Everybody is just on a different level, it seems like, since he's coming to the ball game. That ball was deflected and intercepted. That's Vincent Ray. Coming up with the deflected pass and the pick. And that squelches the march by Miami. Duke needed that play in the worst way. And they finally get it. Bach a Warwick knocks that ball up and allows it to get to Vincent Ray. Just under 10 minutes to play. Duke needs to strike quickly, and this is not their game. Early when they were affected, they were running the football, setting up third and short situations. And now back to the ground as we check in once again with our campus connection reporter, Abby Wainer. Abby? Amanda Blumenhurst is a senior on the women's golf team here at Duke. She's a three-time first-team All-ACC, three-time first-team All-American, and a three-time National Player of the Year. She's led Duke to two All-ACC or to two to two ACC championships, excuse me, and or uh, two ACC championships and two national championships, three ACC championships, <laughs> while football and basketball are juggling the major sports at any university. Amanda is by far the most successful athlete at Duke and perhaps in the nation. Abby, thank you. A lot of championships you had to get out there. <laughs> yeah, lots. She's great. How about that? <laughs> she is great. In fact, she probably doesn't get the publicity she deserves because I think yeah. she will be the next uh, big star on the LPGA Tour when she decides to turn professional. Got to give another plug for Abby's defense. Hey, Abby, uh, we want to thank you for being a part of our team today. You were delightful, and we want to wish you the best of luck looking at your schedule upcoming. Uh, Duke always has that competitive schedule. Oklahoma State, Big 12 school uh, at Western Kentucky, possibly DePaul in that early tournament. That's a pretty good schedule early on. Yeah, you know, we're looking forward to it. And I guess the good thing is that we open up with our blue-white scrimmage where, you know, either way, we're bound to win. So start off the season with a win and go from there. Hey, keep playing that good defense, okay? <laughs> I will. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thanks, right. Abby. Yeah, Abby is really known more for offense than defense. And that highlight we showed earlier, we were talking about her defensive prowess, and she said, guys, we're doing please tell my coaches. <laughs> we're giving the hex to the coaches <laughs> like the Duke guys were doing today <laughs> to the Miami folks. <laughs> but Abby was great, and she is a senior at Duke, one more year to play basketball, and then I think uh, she has a future in this business. Buck, what do you think? I, I think so, too. Like I said, if, you know, WNBA first, and then maybe the U, or even bigger and better things. We enjoyed Abby. We, we Abby, enjoyed thanks it. so much.
Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. All right, L, and also your brother Alex is here, right? Yeah, my brother is here. He's a football player in high school, and he unfortunately tore up his shoulder last week, so he uh, came out here to hang out with my sister and I and visit the campus a little bit, so uh, hopefully he's having a good time. All right. Alex Weiner, maybe a future Blue Devil himself. Let's check in with the studio. All right, a couple of games in the books. Ole Miss down by four. Fourth down incomplete to Alabama holds on. They are undefeated with a four-point win. Virginia overtime against North Carolina. The Heels with the field goal. Cedric Pierman with the finisher. Virginia upsets North Carolina in overtime. All right, the grow must go signs. When we were there four weeks ago, uh, I don't think you'll see those anymore. They won four in a row. <laughs> they are on a serious roll. Make it three in a row, heading next week at Georgia Tech. Shaping up to be a good matchup. Miami now looking to run some clock. That's Deron Thomas. One of the few uh, rare seniors on this roster. That's big Orlando Franklin. He's down on the ground. And when I say big, he's big 6'7", 340. In fact, this entire offensive line for Miami is absolutely huge. And the big fella said, get away, I can get up. <laughs> and look how big he is compared to the trainers. And that is a large man from Delray Beach. I think you might have a cramp of some kind. Big offensive line, and I think they're finally starting to get healthy, too. That was the other thing. Reggie Youngblood, the right tackle, is playing on two bad knees and struggling to play every week. And that helps your offense as well when you have your big offensive lineman in the mix. So Miami will snap that losing streak of six games in the ACC. They won two in a row. They're four and three. And another completion for Ron Collier. 14 yards. That's Collier's first grab today. Another true freshman. Well, this is the different pace that they play with with Ja'Cory Harris. And Marv had shown spurts of that also early in the season. But it just seems like, you know, they were looking for one of these guys to step up. And I'd be very curious to see who they name the starter next week. With this performance, I'd have to say, I would think Ja'Cory Harris would be that guy. They host Wake Forest next week at Dolphin Stadium. They took a bad loss today. And Wake Forest got Hammered in Maryland. Now back to the ground it goes. Let's join Lowe Galindo now in the studio for another Sports Center UN game update. As Penn State took the lead over Michigan on a safety, and then they get a little more. Evan Royster with a 21 yard run. That sets up a one yard plunge from Daryl Clark. Penn State up 26 17. Penn State. Trying to put away Michigan. Rich Rodriguez had them ready to play today. Speaking of the Wolverines, and one in five versus Michigan when they are undefeated. Lost nine straight overall to the Wolverines. Yeah. Michigan, Michigan always seems to play them very well, especially when they're doing well. There's to the outside. Darius Johnson pushed out of bounds by Lee Butler. You know, again, when you talk to David Cutcliffe, another injured player down for Duke and he was fired at Ole Miss and we talked to him about his friend Philip Fulmer who's certainly on the hot seat at Tennessee and you know when you talk to Cuddy he says listen you got to feel bad for the assistant coaches too and it involves families and he talked about Tommy Bowden and he said yeah Bowden leaves but now all those assistant coaches could be looking for jobs and what about their children who are in school and they love the junior high or the high school they go to so you don't realize that when the fans call for these coaches to be fired I mean it's not just the coach but there's a whole staff and a whole family and children involved and you know when you talk to a guy like Cutcliffe you know he feels it because yeah. he's been through it a lot of people are affected think about Ole Miss how many times did they go to bowl games when he was in his six years four hadn't been to a bowl game since he left the other factor that is you talk about with Tommy Bowden leaving or getting, you know, resigning or whatever you want to call it. I just thought it was really classless by Cullen Harper to come out and say he deserved it. Mm. You know, maybe he wasn't motivating you. Maybe he wasn't impacting you. But to ever say to somebody he deserved it, you tell him to, to his face if you want to do that. I just, I, I really didn't like that. And I know 
uh, Clemson was not playing very well, but that's just a class with that. And he retracted that statement somewhat, but it was almost as if uh, he did it because of all the heat he received. And the initial comment, Harris now over the middle has his man. And once again, it's Johnson on the receiving end. That goes for 16. Jabari Marshall on the stop for the Blue Devils. With that said, you have a young quarterback now. Got his rhythm up. I mean, he's really feeling comfortable. And he's finding his, his favorite target is Aldarius Johnson. Aldarius is probably saying, hey, stay in the game, man. Because when you're in here, I catch a lot of passes. <laughs> They're five for five in the red zone, all touchdowns. Looking to tack on another one. And look at the stands here at Wallace Wade Stadium. They have gone home, or at least a homecoming party. It was packed earlier, but not any longer. Harris has a lot of space. What's he going to do? Not sure he was even sure. <laughs> he goes down after two yard gain. ESPNU College Football Primetime presented by City is next. It's Arkansas against Kentucky. Razorbacks fresh off that upset of Auburn, and Kentucky has had some injuries, needing a victory at home with a tough schedule ahead. It's the Southeastern Conference on ESPNU, and we are excited. Good matchup there. Arkansas coming off of a win that they much needed, much needed win. Second and goal. Ball on the seven yard line. First carry for Shawbry McNeil. The second year player out of Dallas. Petron Ganey on the stop for Duke. You look at Duke moving forward, their schedule. Get easy. No. <laughs> at Vanderbilt, at Wake Forest, NC State after that. NC State show the other night. You just never know what you're going to get from them. Yeah, NC State is, they're so unpredictable. They have yeah. so many injuries, and they have some academic casualties. Tom O'Brien trying to rebuild that program. They do have some talent. They're dangerous, as Florida State found out. I think we're starting to see the compression of the ACC start to come back. You know, we talked about it early, how big, how good the Big 12 was and how good all these things were happening. You see the great run by Sean Green Mission. Touchdown for McNeil is second of the season. And Miami continues to pour it on in this second half. Yeah, just good power football here. Look at that offensive line just coming off. And that D line now at this point for Duke is really tired. They've been on the field a long time. We talked about time of possession in the first half. Completely switched over or should have in the second half. That defense has been on a long time. Duke led 17-7. And then Miami scored on a drive right before halftime. And since then, 35 unanswered points for the Hurricanes. Hi, Billy Mays here for the Big City Slider Station. The fast and easy way to press and cook delicious sliders. Those restaurant mini burgers everyone loves. No more squishing and squashing or flipping and flopping. With the Slider Station, just scoop, press, and cook right on your stove. The unique design cooks both sides at once, so you never have to flip them. And in just two minutes, you'll have five mouth-watering sliders. Use dinner rolls, potato rolls, any bun. You can double or triple stack them and watch your family attack them. Top with pickles, onions, ketchup or cheese, big city sliders are sure to please. The double-sided non-stick surface is so slick, not even burnt on cheese will stick. Whether it's ground beef, chuck or sirloin, just scoop, press and cook. No flipping and no hassle. Make healthy turkey, chicken and veggie burgers with ease and join the craze with me, Billy Mays. You can also cook them on a bed of onions for that classic diner taste. Or use the slider station as the ultimate burger press to load the grill in no time. And watch this. On a busy school morning, five perfect egg sandwiches in an instant. Moms, you're going to love it. And when you're done, clean up the breeze. Call now and receive the Big City Slider Station with measuring scoop for just $19.99. We'll also include the Slider Station recipe guide, loaded with my favorite creations like the barbecue bacon cheddar and the original Billy Burger free. But call 
right now and we'll send you the quick prep slicer perfect for onions pickles and mushrooms a $20 value free just pay separate shipping and handling you get it all big city slider station measuring scoop recipe guide and quick prep slicer all for just $19.99 order right now Call 1-800-730-2652. That's 1-800-730-2652 to order Big City Slider Station, the mini burger sensation that's sweeping the nation. Don't delay. Call 1-800-730-2652. I hope you're enjoying today's game presented in high definition. Boy, the pictures look fantastic. Today's game also presented by Allstate. And what a showing by the U on the U. 35 unanswered points. And they lead it 49-24. And just look at those youngsters when you throw the name. Six for six in the red zone. All touches. I mentioned Aldarius Johnson, Travis Benjamin, Laron Bird, Theron Collier, Ja'Cory Harris. All TDs true by freshmen. Seven TDs by seven different players. Wow. There's the squib kick. Once again, Duke has a little trouble fielding the low squib. No, this is the one thing that Coach Cutcliffe and his staff were worried about. You know, just if, if Miami just decided to wake up, which they did in the second half, it was going to be tough. And I think it coincided, Doug, coincidentally with Ja'Cory Harris. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I wonder next week against Wake, will he get the start? I think he has to. Zach Asak in at quarterback now for Duke. And we talked about this young man from Massachusetts. His dad was a great player here back in... 1968 and he wanted to come to Duke and had a terrific freshman year flag down on the play as he gives off to Tony Jackson who's shown me a lot today unfortunately for ASAC he had that uh, situation academically uh, caught plagiarizing a, a paper and so he set out a year you know, he, he went up back home mm -hmm. and went to the New England Patriots where he was really just a glorified ball boy and yeah. he threw passes to Players on the practice squad, injured players, and it's a guy watching Brady, watching him prepare really helped him. Illegal formation foul. Fewer than seven players on the line of scrimmage. Five yards from the previous spot. Remains first down. Doug, the other thing I liked about that is he took responsibility for it. Yeah, absolutely. Any article you read, he said, I was wrong, I shouldn't have done it. And he did everything he could to get back in the good graces of the university, and that's why he's back here. And he now speaks to incoming freshmen. And he said, listen, it's therapeutic for him. And he just says, I made a mistake. You don't want to do what I did. And he tells these kids coming in, do not take shortcuts because he said it came down to him. He was just lazy, downright lazy. And so good character about how mm -hmm. he came back. Perfect story. Tony Jackson with the carry now. And we are live in Durham, North Carolina, home of the Duke Blue Devils. Homecoming weekend. At historic Wallace Wade Stadium, which was packed earlier, but Miami with 35 unanswered has sent most of the folks home. Doug Bell, along with former UCLA star Charles Arbuckle and Abby Wayner, our Campus Connection reporter. And coming up next, it's SEC action on the U. Arkansas, Kentucky. I'll tell you what, I'm excited about the future on ESPNU, Buck. Uh, today, for example, we have the Big East. Followed by the ACC and now the SEC. Pretty good day here on the U. Oh, yeah. And a swack later on. Oh, yeah. Raphael Chestnut got hurt. He got rolled up at the very end of that play. Can't afford to lose any more receivers. They've really struggled in that area also. He will be going to Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington and is immediately following this game. Rich Brooks has done such a wonderful job. When he took over the Kentucky program, it was shambles, much like David yeah. Cutcliffe at Duke. <laughs> I, I was going to say, I mean, you know, the same kind of concept, Doug. You, you think about great basketball schools, and you have to go in and kind of coexist with the already a good program or a great program, and, you know, it's hard to build. And I don't know how if people realize that. He did it, and, but you need guys with experience. Rich Brooks with Oregon, I, when I played at UCLA, Great coach and have been around the West Coast. David Cutcliffe has been at Ole Miss. You need a guy to come in and build that has been around him and understands what he needs to do. ASAC keeps it himself. It's a Tim Tebow play. That should be a first down. Of course, the big game tonight on ABC. 
Missouri at Texas. Brent Musburger, Kirk Herbstreit will be on the call. Year was 1896, Missouri's last victory against Texas. Of course, they haven't played a lot over the years. William McKinley was the president. Then Utah becomes the 45th state. <laughs> so you have to go way back for Didn't even have 50 states. Missouri <laughs> over Texas. Because they, up until the Big 12 came around 12 years ago, they were in opposite leagues, yeah, Big 8 Southwest. Yeah, the big thing about that too, Doug, is on that nine-yard carry by Tony Jackson, you also have to consider Chase Daniel. Wanted to play at the University of Texas. They didn't have no scholarships for him. Had one for Ryan Perlou. Perlou backed out, and then Texas came back to him after he had already committed to Missouri. Heard Kirk, Her I heard Kirk Herbstreit tell that story, but I read it before also. He was a, a great player in high school at, in Texas. Another first down for Duke. Alan Bailey on the stop for Miami. And coming up, Arkansas, the Hogs against the Wildcats. In fact, it'll be kicking off here uh, any any moment, and as soon as uh, this game concludes, we'll get you out to Lexington, Kentucky. Doug. Kicking off right now, Buck. Maysack <laughs> <laughs> looking deep. And he just overshoots everyone, throws that out of bounds. Looking for a silver <laughs> lining for Duke, and it's difficult when you lose 49-24, you give up 35 unanswered, but they wanted to establish a running game. And, and that's what they've done. We saw that was a positive, especially compared to how woeful it was against Georgia Tech. I also think, too, they, they really showed it for a half at least, and, you know, that they could play and play with the team with Miami's speed and all of that. It just got out of hand, and they had some turnovers and some other things happen. But I, I think they are really starting to show this is not the Duke team of old. And even though the score doesn't indicate it, they're much tougher out when you come to Duke or when they come to play you. Clifford Harris. Goes for 15. So Harris now has 66 yards. I think that 56 and 67 for Jackson. They're well over 100 yards, about 120. 120 total yards on the ground tonight for Duke. Well, they think if they can get 140 to 150 yards every game, that gives them a chance with the way their offense plays. Resack. Looking in the end zone. No flag there. There was some contact. That'll go incomplete. Brandon Harris on the coverage for Miami. Next week, Duke plays at Vanderbilt, and Vandy needs one victory. After losing today to Georgia, they need one to become bowl eligible for the first time since 1984. So you know Vandy wants that one next week. <laughs> That's a big one for the Commodores. There's a lot of talk about Bobby Johnson and Clemson. He's a Clemson graduate. Asak pumps it outside, has his man, Danny Parker, but he falls down. Parker, a good size tight end, 6'4, 230. Danny Parker, the receiver on the He's a young, young guy of Rockville, Maryland. That's the one thing, too, for Miami. I know they've had the number one recruiting classes in some circles the last year and maybe even this year, but Duke has done very well recruiting as well. Asak has his man. That goes to Jeremy Ringfield. Picks up 12 on the play. Duke trying to get in the end zone before the final gun sounds. Ringfield. Big receiver, it's six feet five inches tall. Got a little turf stuck in that face mask. Asak looking in the end zone. That's a flag. That'll be a hold on Brandon Harris. Look at that turf up the mask. <laughs> Need to clean the windshield. <laughs> look, hold on, look, take a look here. Hold on, right there. Like, man, get that out of here. <laughs> But he kept on it. He said, I'm going to go catch the ball. <laughs> wow. He got it all cleaned out. Got the windshield cleaned out so he can see. There's no wipers on those helmet guys. It rained most, uh, most of yesterday. It wasn't a heavy rain, just a mist, solid, annoying type rain. But it certainly made this 
field very soggy. Asap trying to lead Duke in for a late touchdown to make this just a little more respectable. Take the sting out of a tough loss. Stretches forward. Gets down to the two yard line. And he'll call timeout. And once again, coming up right after our game, we will go straight to Lexington, Kentucky. For the Cats against the Hogs. Randy Shannon celebrating his first ACC victory since early last season when they knocked off Florida State. We told you next week for the U, it's Wake Forest. And then at Virginia, boy, they could turn their season around in a big way, Buck, if they go on a roll here. Yeah. I mean, you they know, really you, can, win, yeah. you win four out of those next five, and you got eight wins. You're going to a pretty good ball game. Well, they're playing at a deficit because they already were 0 and 2 and now going to be 1 and 2. And then Duke, uh, we told you the game at Vandy, and then at Wake, boy, it is a tough slate the rest of the way for the Blue Devils. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But keep in mind, three wins up to this point of the season matches the win total of the last three years combined. So, I mean, they've already accomplished a lot. And I think that's hard to temper because they're fans and they're getting excited about what they've been able to do, but there's still some work to be done. Mm -hmm. Asak looks in the end zone. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to put his head down. He's pulled forward for the touchdown. No flags. So the Blue Devils on the board. Sack. His first touchdown of the season. Rollout has the option of throwing the football or running it. Zach Aside does a good job of just finding that area, the soft spot of the defense, and going for it for six. And the extra point into that open end zone is good. And it's now 49-31. David Cutcliffe, uh, you're right, Buck. It's back to the practice field. I mean, he practices hard, buddy. I they, mean, they, they get at it. They do. But that's the only way you change the mindset of your team, and he knows that. I mean, a lot of people say, well, how do you become successful? And all I kept hearing him say was hard work. Mm -hmm. Hard work, you got to work at it. He says, practice makes permanent. So whatever you do there comes to the practice field. And I think his coaches understand they know what he's looking for out of the practices as well. That was a 12 play drive, 64 yards. This game, uh, first quarter went by like uh, warp speed. I mean, it was fast and now it slowed down like a, a snail's pace. When you said that, you put the law of averages <laughs> on the backside because it was moving and you said, hey, it's going pretty fast. <laughs> It looks like the Hurricanes will go to four and three with that interesting slate ahead. They're not going to win the ACC, but they could certainly be a spoiler for some teams. And that kick will go out of bounds, and that will be a penalty against Duke. Miami will decline that, take the ball, go down in a knee, and this one will be history. Well, Duke also gets a chance to see what they need to continue doing in order to keep getting better. And David Cutcliffe and his staff said, hey, we've got to continue to get faster. And that's the one thing they do. Everything they do is competitive by nature in the weight room, on the practice field. But you still have to have players to execute. And I think that's the one area that they're continuing to look for. We know Miami and a lot of these guys are blue chip guys, five star guys, whatever you want to call it, ESPN 150 guys. Duke doesn't have a lot of those, but if they can continue to play well, they will continue to get very, very good players here. Ja'Cory Harris is the star offensively for the Hurricanes as he flops down the last play, and I wonder if Randy Shannon will crack a smile. I don't think so. He doesn't say much. Quick handshake with David Cutcliffe. Not a smile, but you know inside he's feeling better. Final score, Miami 49, Duke 31. For more information, log on to your home for the finest of college sports, ESPNU.com.
The proceeding has been an exclusive presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Let's send you now to Lexington, Kentucky for the Cats and Hogs.